Welcome back. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for updates. If our content isn't for you, we kindly ask you to avoid spreading negativity. Your support means the world to us. Thank you. The concept of superposition is fundamental in various fields of science, particularly in physics and engineering. It refers to the principle that states that the total response or effect in a system is the sum of the individual responses or effects of each component acting independently. This idea is particularly prevalent in wave theory, where it asserts that when two or more waves overlap in space, the resultant wave is formed by the algebraic sum of the individual waves. In classical mechanics, superposition applies to linear systems, where forces or displacements can be added together. For example, if two forces are acting on an object, the total force experienced by the object can be calculated by simply adding the magnitudes of the individual forces, taking their directions into account. In the context of quantum mechanics, superposition takes on a more abstract meaning. It describes how a quantum system can exist simultaneously in multiple states until it is observed or measured. This characteristic leads to phenomena, such as interference patterns, which can be observed in experiments involving particles like electrons or photons. When these particles are not observed, they exhibit behaviors that suggest they are in a superposition of states. Superposition also plays a crucial role in electrical engineering, particularly in analyzing circuits. In linear circuits, the voltage or current at any point can be determined by summing the contributions from each independent source while turning off all other sources. This simplification allows engineers to solve complex circuit problems more efficiently. Overall, the concept of superposition provides a powerful framework for understanding and analyzing systems across various scientific disciplines. Its implications range from the behavior of waves to the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics, highlighting its significance in both theoretical and practical applications. Welcome back. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for updates. If our content isn't for you, we kindly ask you to avoid. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Schrodinger's cat is a thought experiment devised by physicist Erwin Schrodinger in 1935 to illustrate the peculiarities of quantum mechanics, particularly the concept of superposition. The experiment presents a scenario involving a cat placed inside a sealed box alongside a radioactive atom, a Geiger counter, a vial of poison, and a hammer. According to the principles of quantum mechanics, the radioactive atom has a 50% chance of decaying within an hour. If the atom decays, the Geiger counter detects this decay, triggering the hammer to break the vial of poison, which would ultimately result in the death of the cat. Conversely, if the atom does not decay, the cat remains alive. In this thought experiment, until the box is opened and an observation is made, the cat is considered to be in a superposition of states. This means the cat is simultaneously alive and dead. The act of opening the box and observing the cat collapses this superposition into one definite state. Either the cat is alive or it is dead. Schrodinger intended this scenario to highlight the absurdity of applying quantum mechanics to everyday objects. It raises important questions about the nature of reality, observation, and the role of the observer in determining the state of a quantum system. The thought experiment has sparked significant discussion and debate within the fields of physics and philosophy, influencing interpretations of quantum mechanics and our understanding of the universe. Overall, Schrodinger's cat serves as a compelling illustration of the complexities of quantum theory and the challenges it poses to classical intuitions about reality. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum entanglement is a phenomenon in quantum mechanics where two or more particles become interconnected in such a way that the state of one particle instantly influences the state of the other, regardless of the distance separating them. This relationship occurs when particles interact 
and subsequently move apart, creating a shared quantum state. When entangled, the properties of these particles are linked. For example, if one particle is measured and found to have a particular spin or polarization, the other particle will immediately exhibit a corresponding property, even if it is light years away. This instantaneous connection challenges classical intuitions about locality and communication, leading to what is often referred to as spooky action at a distance, a phrase famously used by Albert Einstein. Quantum entanglement has significant implications for various fields, including quantum computing and quantum cryptography. In quantum computing, entangled particles can be used to create qubits, the fundamental units of information that allow quantum computers to perform calculations much faster than classical computers. In quantum cryptography, entanglement ensures secure communication, as any attempt to eavesdrop on the system would disturb the entangled state, alerting the communicating parties to the presence of an intruder. The phenomenon of quantum entanglement has been experimentally confirmed through various tests, such as the Bell test experiments, which demonstrate the non-classical correlations predicted by quantum mechanics. These findings underscore the strange and counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics, raising profound questions about the nature of reality, information, and the fundamental workings of the universe. In summary, quantum entanglement exemplifies the interconnectedness of particles at the quantum level, presenting both theoretical challenges and practical applications that continue to influence our understanding of the physical world. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Entanglement is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics that describes a unique connection between two or more particles. When particles become entangled, their states are linked in such a way that the measurement of one particle's properties immediately determines the properties of the other particle, no matter how far apart they are. This correlation occurs without any apparent transfer of information between the particles, which is one of the reasons why entanglement is considered strange and counterintuitive. One of the most notable consequences of entanglement is the violation of classical notions of locality and realism. According to classical physics, objects are only influenced by their immediate surroundings, and the properties of a system should exist independently of observation. However, entangled particles exhibit behavior that challenges these ideas. For instance, if two entangled particles are separated by large distances and one is measured, the state of the other particle is instantly determined, regardless of the distance between them. This phenomenon raises questions about the nature of reality and the role of the observer in determining the state of a system. Another consequence of entanglement is its potential for applications in quantum technology. For example, entangled particles can be used in quantum computing where they serve as qubits, enabling faster processing of information compared to classical computers. In quantum cryptography, entanglement ensures secure communication, as any attempt to measure or intercept the entangled particles would disrupt their state and alert the communicating parties to the presence of an intruder. Entanglement also plays a crucial role in experiments designed to test the foundations of quantum mechanics, such as Bell's theorem and the associated experiments that demonstrate the non-classical correlations predicted by quantum theory. These experiments have provided strong evidence for the reality of entanglement and its implications for our understanding of the physical universe. In conclusion, entanglement is a key aspect of quantum mechanics that not only highlights the interconnectedness of particles, but also challenges our understanding of locality and realism. Its strange consequences continue to inspire research and exploration in both theoretical and applied physics, revealing new insights into the nature of reality. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Entanglement is a fundamental concept. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you,
kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Entanglement has significant applications in modern technology, particularly in the fields of quantum computing, quantum cryptography, and quantum sensing. These real-world examples illustrate how entanglement is being harnessed to advance technology and improve information security. One of the most prominent applications of entanglement is in quantum computing. Quantum computers utilize qubits, which can exist in multiple states simultaneously due to superposition. When qubits are entangled, they can perform complex calculations at speeds far surpassing classical computers. For instance, Google's quantum computer, Sycamore, demonstrated quantum supremacy by solving a specific problem much faster than the best classical supercomputers. This achievement showcases the potential of entangled qubits to revolutionize computing power and efficiency. In the realm of quantum cryptography, entanglement is utilized to create secure communication channels. Quantum key distribution, or QKD, allows two parties to share encryption keys with absolute security. In this process, entangled particles are sent between the parties. If an eavesdropper attempts to intercept the particles, the entanglement is disrupted, alerting the parties to the breach. One notable example is the use of the quantum key distribution network established in China, which employs entangled photons to enable secure communication over long distances. Another application of entanglement is in quantum sensing. Entangled particles can enhance measurement precision in various fields, including gravitational wave detection and medical imaging. For instance, experiments in gravitational wave astronomy use entangled particles to improve the sensitivity of detectors, enabling scientists to observe cosmic events with greater accuracy. Additionally, in medical imaging, entangled photons can provide clearer images and better diagnostic capabilities. Moreover, researchers are exploring the use of entanglement in developing advanced technologies such as quantum networks. These networks aim to create a global quantum internet, allowing secure communication and the transfer of quantum information across vast distances. By leveraging entangled particles, these networks could facilitate new forms of communication that are faster and more secure than existing technologies. In summary, entanglement is a critical element in various modern technologies, particularly in quantum computing, quantum cryptography, and quantum sensing. As research in these areas continues to progress, the potential applications of entanglement are likely to expand, leading to innovations that could transform industries and enhance information security. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum tunneling is a phenomenon in quantum mechanics that describes the ability of a particle to pass through a potential energy barrier, even when it seemingly lacks the energy required to do so. This behavior is contrary to classical physics, where a particle must have enough energy to overcome a barrier in order to move from one side to the other. In quantum mechanics, Particles such as electrons do not have definite positions and momenta. Instead, they are described by wave functions, which provide probabilities of finding a particle in a particular location. When a particle encounters a potential barrier, its wave function does not abruptly stop at the barrier. Instead, it extends into the barrier region. This means that there is a finite probability that the particle can be found on the other side of the barrier even if it does not possess enough energy to climb over it. Quantum tunneling has several important implications and applications. One of the most notable examples is in nuclear fusion, which powers stars, including our sun. In fusion reactions, atomic nuclei must overcome repulsive forces due to their positive charges. Quantum tunneling allows these nuclei to get close enough to each other to fuse even at temperatures where classical physics would predict that fusion cannot occur. Another application of quantum tunneling is found in modern electronics. For example, in tunnel diodes, which are semiconductor devices, tunneling occurs when charge carriers move through an energy barrier, allowing for faster switching times and enhanced performance in electronic circuits. 
Quantum tunneling also plays a role in scanning tunneling microscopy, a technique that allows scientists to image surfaces at the atomic level by measuring tunneling currents between a sharp tip and the surface being studied. In the field of chemistry, quantum tunneling is essential for understanding reaction rates. In certain chemical reactions, particles can tunnel through energy barriers, leading to reactions that would not occur at the predicted rates based on classical models. This phenomenon is significant in enzymatic reactions and other processes involving molecular interactions. Overall, quantum tunneling illustrates the unique and often counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics. It highlights how particles can behave in ways that defy classical expectations, leading to important applications across various scientific and technological fields. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The phenomenon of quantum tunneling is a fundamental concept in quantum mechanics that describes how particles can pass through energy barriers that they seemingly do not have enough energy to overcome. Unlike classical physics, where an object must possess sufficient energy to surmount a barrier, quantum mechanics allows for a different scenario due to the wave-like nature of particles. In quantum mechanics, particles such as electrons are represented by wave functions, which describe the probability of finding a particle in a particular location. When a particle encounters a potential energy barrier, its wave function does not abruptly stop at the barrier. Instead, it extends into the barrier region, indicating that there is a non-zero probability that the particle can be found on the other side of the barrier. This ability to traverse the barrier, despite lacking the classical energy needed, is known as tunneling. One of the most significant implications of quantum tunneling occurs in nuclear fusion, the process that powers stars, including our sun. In nuclear fusion, atomic nuclei must overcome strong repulsive forces due to their positive charges. Quantum tunneling enables these nuclei to approach each other closely enough to overcome this repulsion and fuse, even at lower temperatures than classical physics would predict. Quantum tunneling also has practical applications in modern technology. For example, tunnel diodes, a type of semiconductor device, exploit tunneling to allow for faster switching times and improved performance in electronic circuits. Additionally, scanning tunneling microscopy utilizes quantum tunneling to achieve high-resolution imaging of surfaces at the atomic level. This technique measures tunneling currents between a sharp tip and a surface providing valuable information about the surface's structure and properties. In the field of chemistry, quantum tunneling is crucial for understanding reaction dynamics. Certain chemical reactions can occur more rapidly than expected because particles can tunnel through energy barriers. This effect is especially important in enzymatic reactions and other molecular interactions, where tunneling influences the rates and pathways of reactions. In summary, Quantum tunneling is a remarkable phenomenon that illustrates the unique and often counterintuitive nature of quantum mechanics. It demonstrates how particles can behave in ways that defy classical expectations, leading to significant implications in both theoretical research and practical applications across various scientific and technological fields. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum tunneling plays a critical role in both semiconductor technology and the fusion process that powers the sun. Understanding these applications provides insight into how quantum mechanics influences modern technology and natural phenomena. In semiconductor technology, quantum tunneling is essential for the operation of various electronic devices. One of the most notable examples is the tunnel diode, which is a type of semiconductor that utilizes tunneling to achieve high-speed operation. In a tunnel diode, 
The energy barriers created by the PN junction allow charge carriers, such as electrons, to tunnel through the barrier instead of having to overcome it. This tunneling effect enables the diode to conduct current in both forward and reverse directions at very high speeds, making it ideal for high-frequency applications and fast switching in electronic circuits. Additionally, quantum tunneling is vital in the functioning of flash memory, a type of non-volatile storage used in devices like USB drives and solid-state drives. In flash memory cells, electrons are stored in a floating gate, and tunneling is used to inject or remove these electrons from the gate. The ability to control tunneling allows for data storage and retrieval, making flash memory a critical component of modern computing. In the context of the Sun's fusion process, quantum tunneling is equally important. The fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium occurs at extremely high temperatures and pressures in the Sun's core. Classical physics suggests that the electrostatic repulsion between positively charged protons would prevent them from getting close enough to fuse. However, quantum tunneling allows these protons to tunnel through the energy barrier created by their mutual repulsion. As a result, protons can come close enough for the strong nuclear force to take effect, leading to fusion. This process of nuclear fusion is responsible for the immense energy produced by the sun, which provides light and warmth to our planet. The energy generated in the sun's core eventually radiates outward, sustaining life on Earth and influencing the solar system. In summary, quantum tunneling is a crucial phenomenon in semiconductor technology, enabling high-speed electronic devices and efficient data storage solutions. It also plays a fundamental role in the fusion processes that power the sun, demonstrating the far-reaching implications of quantum mechanics in both technological advancements and natural phenomena. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum mechanics has revolutionized our understanding of the physical world and has led to numerous applications across various fields. These applications have transformed technology, medicine, and scientific research, demonstrating the practical significance of quantum theory. One of the most prominent applications of quantum mechanics is in the development of quantum computers. Unlike classical computers, which use bits as the basic units of information, quantum computers utilize qubits. Qubits can exist in multiple states simultaneously due to superposition, allowing quantum computers to perform complex calculations at unprecedented speeds. This capability has the potential to solve problems that are currently intractable for classical computers, such as simulating molecular interactions in drug discovery and optimizing large-scale logistical operations. Quantum mechanics also plays a vital role in the field of quantum cryptography. Quantum key distribution, or QKD, leverages the principles of quantum mechanics to create secure communication channels. By using entangled particles, QKD ensures that any attempt to eavesdrop on the communication would disrupt the entangled state, alerting the parties involved. This method provides a level of security that is theoretically unbreakable, making it highly valuable for protecting sensitive information. In medicine, quantum mechanics has influenced the development of advanced imaging techniques. For example, magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, relies on principles of quantum mechanics to create detailed images of soft tissues within the body. MRI technology uses the behavior of atomic nuclei in a magnetic field to produce high-resolution images that aid in diagnosing various medical conditions. Quantum mechanics also contributes to the field of semiconductors, which are essential for modern electronics. The principles of quantum tunneling and energy band theory enable the design of various semiconductor devices, including diodes, transistors, and integrated circuits. These devices are the building blocks of computers, smartphones, and other electronic technologies that have become integral to daily life. Additionally, quantum mechanics has applications in material science. Researchers use quantum theory to understand the properties of materials at the atomic and molecular levels. 
This understanding enables the development of new materials with tailored properties, leading to advancements in fields such as nanotechnology and superconductivity. In summary, the applications of quantum mechanics are vast and diverse, impacting fields such as computing, cryptography, medicine, and material science. By harnessing the principles of quantum theory, researchers and engineers are continually pushing the boundaries of what is possible, leading to innovations that have the potential to transform our world. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our com Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Quantum computing and cryptography are two interconnected fields that utilize the principles of quantum mechanics to revolutionize information processing and security. Quantum computing harnesses the unique properties of quantum bits or qubits, which can exist in multiple states simultaneously due to superposition. Unlike classical bits, which are either zero or one, qubits can represent both values at once. This ability enables quantum computers to perform complex calculations much faster than classical computers. In addition to superposition, quantum computing also relies on entanglement, a phenomenon where qubits become interconnected. When qubits are entangled, the state of one qubit instantly influences the state of another, regardless of the distance between them. This interconnectedness allows quantum computers to process vast amounts of data in parallel, making them particularly powerful for specific tasks, such as factoring large numbers, optimizing complex systems, and simulating molecular interactions. One of the most promising applications of quantum computing is in cryptography. Quantum cryptography, particularly quantum key distribution, utilizes the principles of quantum mechanics to create secure communication channels. In quantum key distribution, two parties generate and share a secret key using entangled particles or single photons. If an eavesdropper attempts to intercept the communication, the act of measurement disturbs the quantum state, alerting the parties to the potential breach. This security is fundamentally different from classical cryptographic methods, which rely on mathematical complexity. Quantum cryptography offers a level of security that is theoretically unbreakable making it highly valuable for protecting sensitive information in various sectors, including finance, government, and healthcare. Quantum computing also has implications for breaking classical encryption methods. Many current encryption algorithms, such as RSA, rely on the difficulty of factoring large numbers. However, quantum computers could potentially solve these problems efficiently, prompting researchers to explore new cryptographic methods that would remain secure in a quantum computing era. In summary, quantum computing and cryptography represent the forefront of technological advancement, leveraging the principles of quantum mechanics to enhance computational power and security. As research in these fields progresses, the potential applications and implications for society will continue to expand offering new solutions to complex problems and challenges in information security. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Relativity is a theory in physics that fundamentally transformed our understanding of space, time, and gravity. Developed by Albert Einstein in the early 20th century, relativity is divided into two parts, special relativity and general relativity. Each part of the theory has significantly influenced modern physics and has reshaped how we perceive the universe. Special relativity introduced in 1905, deals with objects moving at constant speeds, especially those moving close to the speed of light. One of the key principles of special relativity is that the laws of physics are the same for all observers, regardless of their relative motion. This leads to several counterintuitive but scientifically verified results. For example, as objects move closer to the speed of light, time slows down for them relative to an outside observer a phenomenon known as time dilation. 
Additionally, lengths contract along the direction of motion, which is called length contraction. Special relativity also famously demonstrated that mass and energy are equivalent, encapsulated in the equation E equals mc squared, which means that energy is equal to mass multiplied by the square of the speed of light. General relativity, published in 1915, extends the ideas of special relativity to include gravity. In classical physics, gravity was understood as a force that pulls objects together. However, general relativity revolutionized this idea by describing gravity as a result of the curvature of space-time. According to general relativity, massive objects like stars and planets warp the fabric of space-time, creating curves that cause other objects to move toward them. This explanation of gravity has been confirmed by numerous experiments, including the observation of light bending around massive objects, a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. Relativity has had profound implications for our understanding of the universe. It has been essential in developing technologies like GPS, which requires adjustments for time dilation due to the satellite's high speeds and their distance from Earth's gravitational field. It has also been key in understanding black holes, neutron stars, and the expansion of the universe. In summary, relativity is a cornerstone of modern physics that reshaped how we understand space, time, and gravity. Its principles challenge our everyday experiences, but are essential for explaining the behavior of objects at high speeds, as well as the influence of massive bodies in the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Classical mechanics is the branch of physics that deals with the motion of objects and the forces acting upon them. It was primarily developed by Isaac Newton in the 17th century and has been a cornerstone of scientific understanding for centuries. Classical mechanics provides a framework for understanding the motion of everyday objects, from falling apples to planetary orbits, and explains the relationships between force, mass, and acceleration. One of the key principles of classical mechanics is Newton's three laws of motion. The first law states that an object will remain at rest or move in a straight line at constant speed unless acted upon by an external force. The second law defines how the force acting on an object is related to its mass and acceleration, expressed by the equation force equals mass times acceleration. The third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. These laws, along with the law of universal gravitation, provide a comprehensive framework for understanding how objects move and interact. Classical mechanics has been incredibly successful in explaining many aspects of the physical world. It accurately describes the motion of objects at everyday speeds and sizes, such as cars, airplanes, and the orbits of planets. It also laid the groundwork for engineering and technology, from the design of bridges and buildings to the development of machines and tools. However, classical mechanics has its limitations. It begins to break down when dealing with very small objects like atoms and subatomic particles, or when objects move at speeds close to the speed of light. For example, classical mechanics cannot explain the behavior of electrons in an atom, which is governed by the principles of quantum mechanics. Similarly, classical mechanics fails to accurately describe objects moving at extremely high speeds, where the effects of special relativity become important. Another limitation of classical mechanics is that it treats space and time as absolute and separate entities. However, modern physics, through the theory of relativity, shows that space and time are interconnected and can be warped by the presence of mass and energy. In summary, classical mechanics provides a powerful and accurate description of the motion of everyday objects and has been a foundational part of physics for centuries. However, its limitations become apparent when dealing with very small particles, very high speeds, or strong gravitational fields. To address these phenomena, more advanced theories like quantum mechanics and relativity are required. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity 
if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Special relativity is a theory proposed by Albert Einstein in 1905 that fundamentally changed our understanding of space and time. The theory addresses how objects behave when they move at constant speeds, especially when those speeds are close to the speed of light. Special relativity is based on two key principles. The first principle is that the laws of physics are the same for all observers, regardless of how fast they are moving relative to one another. This means that whether you are at rest or traveling at high speed, the physical laws that govern the universe remain the same. The second principle is that the speed of light is constant for all observers, no matter their motion or the motion of the light source. This is different from what we would expect from everyday experiences, where the speed of an object can appear different depending on how fast you are moving relative to it. In the case of light, however, it always moves at the same speed. Special relativity leads to some surprising effects. One of the most famous is time dilation. According to the theory, as an object approaches the speed of light, time slows down for that object relative to an observer who is not moving as fast. This means that time passes more slowly for someone traveling at high speeds compared to someone who is stationary. Another effect is length contraction. Objects moving close to the speed of light appear shorter in the direction of motion when observed from a stationary frame. One of the most famous results of special relativity is the equation E equals mc squared which shows that mass and energy are interchangeable. This equation means that a small amount of mass can be converted into a large amount of energy, a principle that underpins the development of nuclear energy. Special relativity only applies to objects moving at constant speeds in straight lines, without considering the effects of gravity. Despite this, the theory has been verified through countless experiments and has important implications for modern technology. For example, the Global Positioning System, or GPS, must take into account the effects of special relativity to provide accurate positioning data. In summary, special relativity is a theory that redefines our understanding of space, time, and motion. It reveals that time and space are not absolute and that they behave in ways that challenge our everyday experiences, especially when objects move close to the speed of light. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Special relativity is a theory. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The principle of relativity and the constancy of the speed of light are two foundational ideas in Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity, which he introduced in 1905. These concepts fundamentally changed how we understand the nature of space, time, and motion. The principle of relativity states that the laws of physics are the same for all observers, regardless of their state of motion. This means that whether you are standing still or moving at a constant speed, the basic physical laws remain unchanged. This was a revolutionary idea because it suggested that there is no privileged or special frame of reference in the universe. Whether you are in a moving car, a spaceship, or standing on Earth, the physical laws governing motion, energy, and forces apply equally. The second key idea in special relativity is the constancy of the speed of light. According to this principle, the speed of light in a vacuum is always the same, regardless of how fast the observer or the source of light is moving. This means that even if you are moving toward a beam of light or away from it, you will measure the speed of light as the same value. This is a unique and counterintuitive aspect of light, as it differs from how we experience the speeds of everyday objects. For example, if you were moving toward a car, you would expect to measure its speed as higher than if you were moving away from it. But with light, its speed remains constant. These two principles lead to surprising and fascinating consequences. One of these is time dilation, where time slows down for objects moving at very high speeds relative to a stationary observer. Another consequence is length contraction, 
where objects appear shorter in the direction of motion when they approach the speed of light. These effects are not noticeable in everyday life, but become significant when dealing with very high speeds, close to the speed of light. In summary, the principle of relativity ensures that the laws of physics are the same for all observers, no matter their motion, and the constancy of the speed of light reveals that light always travels at the same speed, regardless of the movement of the observer or the light source. These ideas are central to special relativity and have transformed our understanding of the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The principal please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Time dilation and length contraction are two key concepts in Einstein's theory of special relativity, which challenge our everyday understanding of time and space. These effects occur when objects move at speeds close to the speed of light, leading to surprising results about how time and distance behave. Time dilation refers to the phenomenon where time passes more slowly for an object moving at high speeds relative to an observer who is stationary. In other words, if someone were traveling in a spaceship near the speed of light, time would move slower for them compared to someone who is not moving. For example, if an astronaut were traveling at a speed close to the speed of light for what they perceive as one year, much more time would have passed on Earth when they returned. This effect has been confirmed by experiments with atomic clocks on fast-moving planes and satellites, where the clocks experience slight delays compared to stationary clocks on the ground. Length contraction is the idea that objects moving at high speeds appear shorter along the direction of motion to a stationary observer. This means that if you were watching a fast-moving spaceship, the spaceship would look compressed in the direction it is traveling. The faster the object moves, the more pronounced this contraction becomes. For instance, if a spaceship were moving close to the speed of light, its length, as measured by an outside observer, would be significantly shorter than its length at rest. However, to the passengers on the spaceship, everything inside would appear normal. These effects only become noticeable when objects move at speeds approaching the speed of light, which is why we do not observe them in everyday life. For example, a car moving down the highway at normal speeds experiences no noticeable time dilation or length contraction. But at the speed of light, these effects would become very clear. In summary, time dilation is the slowing down of time for an object in motion, while length contraction is the shortening of an object's length along the direction of motion. These concepts are fundamental to special relativity and have been experimentally verified showing that time and space behave in ways that defy our everyday experiences when dealing with extreme speeds. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Time dilation and length control. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The relationship between energy and mass, expressed in the famous equation E equals mc squared, is one of the most important results of Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity. This equation reveals a deep connection between mass and energy, showing that they are two forms of the same thing and can be converted into one another. In the equation, E stands for energy, M stands for mass, and C represents the speed of light in a vacuum. The speed of light is an extremely large number, roughly 300,000 kilometers per second, which means that even a small amount of mass can be converted into a huge amount of energy. This is because the mass is multiplied by the square of the speed of light, making the energy produced from mass conversion enormous. One of the most significant implications of this equation is that mass can be transformed into energy and vice versa. This principle is at the heart of nuclear reactions. For example, in nuclear fission, the process that powers atomic bombs and nuclear reactors, a small amount of the mass of atomic nuclei is converted into energy. 
The same principle applies in nuclear fusion, the process that powers the sun and other stars, where mass is converted into energy as hydrogen atoms fuse together to form helium. E equals m c squared also helps explain why objects become more massive as they move faster. As an object's speed increases, its energy increases, and since energy and mass are equivalent, the object's mass increases as well. However, this effect only becomes noticeable at speeds close to the speed of light. In summary, Einstein's equation E equals m c squared shows that mass and energy are interchangeable. This relationship has profound implications for our. Please share, subscribe, like, comment. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. General relativity is a theory of gravity developed by Albert Einstein, published in 1915, that fundamentally changed our understanding of how gravity works. Before Einstein's theory, gravity was understood through the ideas of Isaac Newton, who described it as a force that pulls objects toward one another. However, general relativity presents a different and more comprehensive explanation of gravity, one that connects it to the fabric of space and time itself. In general relativity, gravity is not seen as a force in the traditional sense. Instead, Einstein proposed that massive objects like stars and planets cause space and time, or space-time, to curve around them. This curvature of space-time is what we perceive as gravity. Objects, including planets, move along the curves created by this distortion, and this is why they orbit stars or fall toward massive bodies. The more massive an object, the more it bends space-time, and the stronger its gravitational effect. One of the most famous examples of general relativity in action is the bending of light around massive objects, a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. Light normally travels in straight lines, but when it passes near a massive object like a galaxy or a black hole, the curvature of space-time causes the light to bend. This effect has been observed in space and provides one of the experimental confirmations of general relativity. General relativity also predicts the existence of black holes, regions of space where the gravitational pull is so strong that not even light can escape. These are formed when very massive stars collapse under their own gravity, creating an incredibly dense point in space. Another major consequence of general relativity is time dilation in strong gravitational fields. According to the theory, time passes more slowly in areas of stronger gravity. For example, a clock on the surface of the Earth, where gravity is stronger, will tick slightly slower than a clock in orbit. This effect is small but has practical implications, such as in the global positioning system, where adjustments must be made for the difference in the flow of time between satellites and the Earth's surface. In summary, general relativity is a revolutionary theory that redefines gravity as the curvature of space-time caused by mass and energy. It explains a wide range of phenomena, from the bending of light around massive objects to the existence of black holes and time dilation. General relativity remains one of the most important theories in modern physics, providing a deeper understanding of how the universe operates on large scales. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The curvature of space-time is a central concept in Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity, which explains how mass affects both space and time. According to this theory, Space-time is a four-dimensional framework that combines the three dimensions of space with the dimension of time. When massive objects such as planets, stars, or galaxies exist in space-time, they cause it to curve around them. This curvature occurs because mass has the ability to distort the fabric of space-time. Imagine space-time as a two-dimensional rubber sheet. When you place a heavy ball, representing a massive object, in the center of the sheet, it creates a dip or curvature around it. Smaller objects placed on the sheet will roll toward the heavier ball, following the curves created by the distortion. Similarly, 
In the universe, when a massive object is present, it bends the space-time around it, causing other objects to move toward it or orbit around it. One of the consequences of this curvature is the phenomenon of gravity. Instead of being viewed as a force acting at a distance, gravity is the result of objects following the curved paths in space-time caused by mass. For example, the Earth orbits the Sun not because it is being pulled by a force, but because it is moving along a path determined by the curvature of space-time created by the Sun's mass. The curvature of space-time also affects the flow of time. According to general relativity, time passes more slowly in stronger gravitational fields. This means that if you were to compare a clock on the surface of the Earth with a clock in deep space, where gravity is weaker, the clock on Earth would tick slightly slower. This effect, known as gravitational time dilation, has practical implications, particularly in technologies like the global positioning system, where precise time measurements are essential. In summary, the curvature of space-time describes how mass influences the structure of space and time. Massive objects cause space-time to bend, leading to the effects of gravity and altering the passage of time. This concept is fundamental to our understanding of the universe and explains a wide range of phenomena observed in astronomy and physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space-time caused by the acceleration of massive objects, such as merging black holes or neutron stars. The existence of gravitational waves was first predicted by Albert Einstein in 1915 as a consequence of his theory of general relativity. According to Einstein, when massive objects move, they create disturbances in space-time that propagate outward at the speed of light. The discovery of gravitational waves was a monumental achievement in modern physics. Although Einstein predicted their existence over a century ago, it was not until February 2016 that the LIGO Observatory detected them for the first time. This detection confirmed a key prediction of general relativity and opened a new era in astronomy. The significance of gravitational waves lies in their ability to provide unique insights into the universe. Unlike electromagnetic waves, such as light, which can be blocked or absorbed by matter, gravitational waves can travel through objects without being affected. This allows scientists to observe cosmic events that are otherwise hidden from view. For instance, the merging of black holes produces strong gravitational waves that can be detected from billions of light years away offering a glimpse into the properties of these mysterious objects. Gravitational waves also allow for the study of phenomena that cannot be observed through traditional means. For example, they provide valuable information about the behavior of extreme gravitational fields and the dynamics of compact objects like neutron stars. This enhances our understanding of fundamental physics, including the nature of gravity and the behavior of matter under extreme conditions. Furthermore, the detection of gravitational waves has led to the development of multi-messenger astronomy, where observations of gravitational waves are combined with those from electromagnetic sources, such as light or gamma rays. This holistic approach enables a more comprehensive understanding of cosmic events and phenomena. In summary, gravitational waves are a groundbreaking aspect of modern physics, revealing important information about the universe. Their discovery confirmed a key prediction of general relativity and has opened new avenues for exploration in astronomy, allowing scientists to study phenomena that were previously inaccessible and enhancing our understanding of the fundamental forces at play in the cosmos. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The applications of relativity, both special and general, have had a profound impact on various fields, including physics, astronomy, and technology. 
Einstein's theories have transformed our understanding of the universe and led to practical innovations that shape our daily lives. One of the most significant applications of special relativity is in the field of particle physics. High-energy particle accelerators, such as the Large Hadron Collider, rely on the principles of special relativity to understand the behavior of subatomic particles. As particles are accelerated close to the speed of light, their mass effectively increases, and their behavior can only be accurately described using relativistic equations. This understanding allows scientists to explore fundamental questions about the nature of matter and the universe. In technology, the Global Positioning System, or GPS, provides a practical application of both special and general relativity. GPS satellites orbit the Earth at high speeds and experience a weaker gravitational field than objects on the surface. As a result, time passes differently for these satellites compared to clocks on Earth. To provide accurate positioning data, the GPS system must account for the effects of time dilation from special relativity and gravitational time dilation from general relativity. Without these adjustments, GPS would quickly become inaccurate, leading to errors in navigation. In astronomy, general relativity has revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos. The theory explains phenomena, such as the bending of light around massive objects, known as gravitational lensing. This effect allows astronomers to study distant galaxies and dark matter by observing how light from these objects is distorted as it passes near massive structures. General relativity also provides the framework for understanding the expansion of the universe and the dynamics of cosmic events, such as black hole mergers and neutron star collisions. Additionally, general relativity has practical applications in technologies that rely on precision measurements. For example, accurate timekeeping, essential for telecommunications and global networks, must consider the effects of gravity on time. These considerations ensure synchronization across different regions, enhancing the performance of various systems. In summary, the applications of relativity are wide-ranging and significant. From advancements in particle physics to practical technologies like GPS, relativity has transformed our understanding of the universe and continues to influence scientific research and everyday technology. The principles established by Einstein have paved the way for innovations that enhance our understanding of the natural world and improve our lives. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Global Positioning System Technology, commonly known as GPS, relies on a network of satellites to provide accurate location and time information to users on Earth. One of the key aspects of GPS technology is the application of the principles of relativity, which play a crucial role in ensuring the precision of satellite systems. GPS satellites orbit the Earth at an altitude of about 20,000 kilometers and travel at speeds of around 14,000 kilometers per hour. Due to their high speed and distance from the Earth's gravitational field, the satellites experience both special and general relativity effects. According to special relativity, time passes more slowly for objects moving at high speeds compared to stationary observers. This means that the atomic clocks on GPS satellites, which are moving rapidly, tick slightly slower than clocks on the surface of the Earth. Additionally, general relativity states that time passes more slowly in stronger gravitational fields. Since GPS satellites are farther from the Earth, where gravity is weaker, their clocks tick faster than those on the surface. When combining these effects, the net result is that the clocks on GPS satellites gain approximately 38 microseconds per day compared to clocks on Earth. If these relativistic effects were not taken into account, GPS measurements would quickly become inaccurate, leading to significant errors in positioning data. To maintain accuracy, GPS systems continuously adjust the time signals sent from the satellites. These adjustments ensure that the time readings from satellites align with those on Earth, allowing for precise calculations of location. Without accounting for the effects of relativity, GPS accuracy would degrade by about 10 kilometers each day.
In summary, relativity has a profound impact on GPS technology. The principles of special and general relativity are essential for ensuring the accuracy of satellite systems. By understanding how time is affected by speed and gravity, GPS technology provides precise location and timing information that is critical for navigation, mapping, and various applications in modern life. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Black holes and gravitational lensing are two remarkable phenomena that provide real-world examples of general relativity in action, demonstrating how massive objects warp the fabric of space-time. Black holes are regions in space where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape from them. They are formed when massive stars exhaust their nuclear fuel and collapse under their own gravity. This collapse results in an incredibly dense point known as a singularity, surrounded by an event horizon, which marks the boundary beyond which nothing can return. Black holes are not directly observable, but their presence can be inferred through their effects on nearby objects. One of the most famous black holes is Sagittarius A star, located at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Astronomers have observed stars orbiting around this invisible object providing evidence of its massive gravitational influence. The movement of these stars allows scientists to estimate the mass of Sagittarius A star, revealing that it is about 4 million times the mass of our sun. Gravitational lensing occurs when a massive object, such as a galaxy or a black hole, bends the path of light from more distant objects behind it. This bending of light is a direct consequence of space-time curvature predicted by general relativity. When light from a distant galaxy passes near a massive foreground object, the light is distorted, creating multiple images or an arc of the background galaxy. One well-known example of gravitational lensing is the Hubble Space Telescope's observations of the galaxy cluster Abel 3900. The gravitational field of the cluster has created stunning arcs and multiple images of galaxies that lie behind it. These observations not only confirm the predictions of general relativity, but also provide valuable insights into the distribution of dark matter within the galaxy cluster. Gravitational lensing also allows astronomers to study extremely distant galaxies that would otherwise be too faint to observe. By utilizing the lensing effect, scientists can enhance the visibility of these distant objects, enabling them to explore the early universe and the formation of galaxies. In summary, black holes and gravitational lensing serve as compelling real-world examples of general relativity in action. The study of black holes enhances our understanding of the universe's most extreme environments, while gravitational lensing provides a unique tool for observing distant galaxies. Together, these phenomena highlight the profound implications of Einstein's theories and their relevance to modern astrophysics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermodynamics is a branch of physics that deals with the relationships between heat, work, temperature, and energy. It provides a framework for understanding how energy is transferred and transformed in physical systems. Thermodynamics is fundamental to many scientific disciplines, including chemistry, engineering, and environmental science. The study of thermodynamics is based on a few key concepts and laws that describe how energy behaves in different situations. The first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed from one form to another. This means that the total energy of a closed system remains constant, even as energy is converted from heat to work or vice versa. The second law of thermodynamics introduces the concept of entropy, which is a measure of the disorder or randomness in a system. This law states that in any energy transfer or transformation, 
the total entropy of a closed system will tend to increase over time. Essentially, energy tends to spread out and become less organized, which is why processes such as heat transfer occur spontaneously from hotter to cooler objects. Thermodynamics also encompasses various processes, such as isothermal, adiabatic, isobaric, and isochore processes. An isothermal process occurs at constant temperature, while an adiabatic process occurs without heat transfer. An isobaric process takes place at constant pressure, and an isochore process occurs at constant volume. Each of these processes helps describe how energy is exchanged in different conditions. The applications of thermodynamics are vast. In engineering, thermodynamics is essential for designing engines, refrigerators, and air conditioning systems. In chemistry, it helps explain reactions and the behavior of gases. Additionally, thermodynamics plays a crucial role in understanding biological processes, such as metabolism and energy production in living organisms. In summary, thermodynamics is a fundamental area of physics that studies energy transfer and transformation. Through its key laws and concepts, it provides insights into the behavior of energy in various systems impacting numerous fields of science and engineering. Understanding thermodynamics is essential for exploring and addressing many real-world challenges related to energy use and efficiency. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermodynamics is a branch of physics that focuses on the study of energy, heat, and work, as well as their interrelationships. It provides a framework for understanding how energy is transferred and transformed in different systems. Thermodynamics is fundamental to various scientific fields, including physics, chemistry, and engineering, as it helps explain how energy influences physical processes. At the core of thermodynamics are several key concepts including temperature, heat, and energy. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in a substance, while heat refers to the transfer of energy from one body to another due to a temperature difference. Energy, in this context, can take various forms, such as thermal energy, mechanical energy, and chemical energy. Thermodynamics is governed by four main laws, which are used to describe how energy behaves in different situations. The first law of thermodynamics, known as the law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. The second law introduces the concept of entropy, indicating that in any energy transfer or transformation, the total entropy of a closed system will tend to increase, leading to a natural progression toward disorder. The third law of thermodynamics addresses the behavior of systems as they approach absolute zero temperature, stating that the entropy of a perfect crystal approaches zero at this temperature. The Zeroff Law of Thermodynamics establishes a fundamental concept of thermal equilibrium, which allows for the definition of temperature. In summary, thermodynamics is the study of the relationships between heat, work, and energy. It encompasses key principles and laws that describe how energy is transferred and transformed in various systems, making it essential for understanding many natural processes and technological applications. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermodynamics plays a crucial role in understanding physical systems and engineering applications. Its principles are fundamental for analyzing energy transfer, conversion, and efficiency in various processes, making it essential in many fields. In physical systems, thermodynamics helps explain how energy interacts with matter. For instance, it describes how heat flows between objects at different temperatures, allowing scientists to understand phenomena such as phase changes, chemical reactions, and the behavior of gases. By applying thermodynamic principles, researchers can predict how systems will respond to changes in temperature, pressure, and volume, leading to insights into natural processes in physics and chemistry.
In engineering, thermodynamics is vital for the design and operation of various systems and devices. For example, it is fundamental in the development of engines, refrigerators, and heat pumps. Engineers use thermodynamic laws to calculate efficiency, work output, and heat transfer rates, ensuring that these systems operate effectively. The first law of thermodynamics is applied to ensure energy conservation in processes, while the second law is used to assess the maximum efficiency of energy conversions. Moreover, thermodynamics is crucial in renewable energy technologies such as solar panels and wind turbines. Understanding how to harness and convert energy efficiently is essential for developing sustainable energy solutions. Thermodynamic principles help optimize these systems enabling engineers to maximize energy capture and conversion while minimizing waste. In the field of materials science, thermodynamics aids in understanding phase diagrams and material properties under different conditions. This knowledge is essential for developing new materials with specific characteristics, such as strength, conductivity, or resistance to heat. In summary, thermodynamics is important in both physical systems and engineering. It provides the framework for analyzing energy interactions, optimizing system performance, and designing efficient technologies. The principles of thermodynamics are essential for addressing various challenges in science and engineering, making them fundamental to advancements in many fields. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negative. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. In thermodynamics, energy, heat, and work are fundamental concepts that describe the behavior of physical systems and the interactions between them. Energy is the capacity to do work or produce heat. It exists in various forms, including kinetic energy, which is associated with motion, and potential energy, which is related to the position or configuration of an object. In thermodynamics, thermal energy is particularly important as it refers to the internal energy of a system due to the motion of its particles. The total energy of a system is conserved, meaning it can change forms but cannot be created or destroyed. Heat is a form of energy transfer that occurs between systems due to a temperature difference. It flows from a hotter object to a cooler one until thermal equilibrium is reached, where both objects have the same temperature. Heat transfer can occur through conduction, convection, and radiation. Understanding heat transfer is essential for analyzing thermal processes and designing systems that efficiently manage energy. Work is the energy transfer that occurs when a force acts on an object, causing it to move. In thermodynamics, work can be done on or by a system. For example, when a gas expands in a cylinder, it pushes against a piston, doing work on the piston. Conversely, when a piston compresses a gas, work is done on the gas. Work and heat are both ways that energy is transferred into or out of a system, and they are interconnected through the first law of thermodynamics which states that the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. In summary, energy, heat, and work are key concepts in thermodynamics that describe how energy is stored, transferred, and transformed in physical systems. Understanding these concepts is essential for analyzing thermodynamic processes and developing technologies that efficiently manage energy. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or com please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The Zeroff Law of Thermodynamics is a fundamental principle that establishes a foundation for the concept of temperature and thermal equilibrium. Although it was formulated after the first three laws of thermodynamics, it is considered the most basic and underpins the other laws. The Zeroff law states that if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. In simpler terms, if system A is in thermal equilibrium with system C, and system B is also in thermal equilibrium with system C, then systems A and B must be in thermal equilibrium with each other. 
This law allows for the definition of temperature as a measurable quantity. When two systems are in thermal equilibrium, they are at the same temperature, meaning there is no net heat transfer between them. The Zeroff law implies that temperature is a property that can be used to compare different systems. If two systems have the same temperature, they will not exchange heat when they come into contact. The importance of the Zeroff law is evident in the design of thermometers. Thermometers work by utilizing the Zeroff law principle. When a thermometer is placed in contact with a substance, it reaches thermal equilibrium with that substance. The temperature reading on the thermometer then reflects the temperature of the substance being measured. In summary, the Zeroff law of thermodynamics establishes the concept of thermal equilibrium and provides the basis for defining temperature. It is a fundamental principle that helps us understand how different systems interact thermally, laying the groundwork for the study of thermodynamics and its applications in science and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The Zeroff Law of Thermodynamics defines thermal equilibrium and is essential for establishing the concept of temperature. It states that if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This fundamental principle allows us to understand and compare the temperatures of different systems. The importance of the Zeroff Law lies in its ability to provide a basis for measuring temperature. When two systems are at the same temperature, there is no heat transfer between them, indicating they are in thermal equilibrium. This relationship allows scientists and engineers to establish a common reference for temperature measurement. By defining thermal equilibrium, the Zeroff Law facilitates the development of temperature scales and thermometers. Thermometers are designed to measure temperature by reaching thermal equilibrium with the substance they are measuring. When a thermometer is placed in a substance, it will adjust to the substance's temperature, providing a direct measurement of that temperature. In summary, the Zeroff Law of Thermodynamics is crucial for defining temperature and establishing a consistent framework for temperature measurement. It underpins the concept of thermal equilibrium, enabling scientists and engineers to accurately compare and quantify temperatures in various systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermal equilibrium is a state in which two or more systems in contact with each other do not exchange heat. This occurs when they reach the same temperature meaning there is no net heat transfer between them. In other words, when two systems are in thermal equilibrium, they are in balance and energy flows between them have stopped. The concept of thermal equilibrium is essential for understanding heat transfer. When two objects at different temperatures come into contact, heat flows from the hotter object to the cooler one until they reach thermal equilibrium. At this point, the temperatures of both objects become equal and heat transfer ceases. Thermal equilibrium can be observed in everyday life. For example, when a warm cup of coffee is left on a table, it eventually cools down to room temperature. The coffee transfers heat to the surrounding air until the temperature of the coffee equals the temperature of the air, achieving thermal equilibrium. In the context of thermodynamics, thermal equilibrium is vital for the accurate measurement of temperature. Instruments like thermometers rely on the principle of thermal equilibrium to provide a temperature reading. When a thermometer is placed in a substance, it will reach thermal equilibrium with that substance, allowing it to accurately reflect the substance's temperature. In summary, thermal equilibrium is a state where two or more systems have reached the same temperature, resulting in no heat transfer between them. This concept is crucial for understanding heat transfer processes and for accurately measuring temperature in various systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you 
kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The first law of thermodynamics, also known as the law of energy conservation, states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. This principle emphasizes that the total energy of a closed system remains constant, although it may be transformed from one type to another, such as from thermal energy to mechanical energy. Mathematically, the first law can be expressed as the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. In simple terms, this means that if you add heat to a system, the internal energy will increase unless work is done by the system, which would decrease its internal energy. The first law has important implications for various processes in thermodynamics. For example, when a gas is heated, it expands and does work on its surroundings, such as pushing against a piston in a cylinder. The amount of energy added as heat contributes to the internal energy of the gas, but some of that energy is used to do work. The first law of thermodynamics also underscores the importance of energy efficiency in machines and processes. Engineers and scientists use this law to analyze energy conversions and ensure that systems operate effectively, minimizing energy losses. In summary, the first law of thermodynamics is a fundamental principle that highlights the conservation of energy. It states that energy can change forms but cannot be created or destroyed, providing a basis for understanding energy transfer and transformation in physical systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The relationship between heat, work, and internal energy is fundamental to the study of thermodynamics. Internal energy refers to the total energy contained within a system due to the kinetic and potential energies of its particles. This energy can change based on heat transfer and work done on or by the system. Heat is the energy that transfers between a system and its surroundings due to a temperature difference. When heat is added to a system, it increases the internal energy of that system. Conversely, when heat is removed from a system, the internal energy decreases. Work is the energy transfer that occurs when a force acts on a system, causing it to move or change shape. Work can be done on a system, increasing its internal energy, or it can be done by the system, resulting in a decrease in internal energy. For example, when a gas expands in a piston, it does work on the piston, using some of its internal energy to push against the force. The first law of thermodynamics summarizes the relationship between these three quantities. It states that the change in internal energy of a system is equal to the heat added to the system minus the work done by the system. This relationship can be expressed mathematically as follows. Change in internal energy equals heat added minus work done. In practical terms, this means that if a system receives heat, its internal energy will increase, assuming no work is done. Conversely, if work is done by the system without heat being added, the internal energy will decrease. In summary, the relationship between heat, work, and internal energy is essential in thermodynamics. Heat transfer can change the internal energy of a system, and work can either increase or decrease that internal energy depending on the direction of the energy transfer. Understanding this relationship is crucial for analyzing thermodynamic processes and systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or com please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The second law of thermodynamics is a fundamental principle that states that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease over time. Entropy is a measure of disorder or randomness within a system. And the second law implies that natural processes tend to move towards a state of greater disorder or higher entropy. One of the key implications of the second law 
is that heat cannot spontaneously flow from a colder body to a hotter body. In practical terms, this means that if you place an ice cube in a warm drink, the ice will melt and the drink will cool down, but the heat will not flow from the ice back into the cold drink. This natural tendency towards increasing entropy is why many processes, such as the melting of ice or the mixing of hot and cold fluids, occur spontaneously. The second law also introduces the concept of efficiency in energy conversion processes. In any energy transfer or transformation, some energy is always lost as waste heat, which contributes to an increase in the overall entropy of the system. This means that no energy conversion process can be 100% efficient. For example, in a heat engine, not all of the heat energy from fuel can be converted into useful work. Some of it will always be lost to the surroundings. Another important aspect of the second law is the distinction between reversible and irreversible processes. A reversible process is an idealized process that can be reversed without any increase in entropy, while an irreversible process leads to an increase in entropy. Most natural processes are irreversible, highlighting the inherent limitations on the efficiency of energy conversion. In summary, the second law of thermodynamic states that the total entropy of an isolated system can never decrease, leading to an inevitable increase in disorder over time. This principle has significant implications for the direction of natural processes, the efficiency of energy conversions, and our understanding of thermodynamic systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Entropy is a measure of disorder or randomness in a system. In thermodynamics, it quantifies the number of microscopic configurations that correspond to a system's macroscopic state. Higher entropy indicates greater disorder and a higher number of possible arrangements of particles, while lower entropy suggests more order and fewer configurations. Entropy plays a crucial role in natural processes, as described by the second law of thermodynamics. This law states that in an isolated system, the total entropy tends to increase over time. This tendency towards increasing entropy explains why certain processes occur spontaneously. For example, when ice melts in a warm room, the overall entropy of the system increases as the orderly structure of ice molecules transforms into the more disordered state of liquid water. In chemical reactions, entropy influences the direction and spontaneity of the reaction. Reactions that lead to an increase in entropy are generally more favorable and tend to occur naturally. For instance, the mixing of gases or the dissolution of a solid in a liquid typically results in an increase in entropy, making these processes spontaneous. Entropy also impacts energy transfer and conversion processes. In any energy transformation, such as in engines or power plants, some energy is inevitably lost as waste heat, contributing to an increase in the overall entropy of the universe. This limitation on energy efficiency highlights the importance of entropy in determining how much useful work can be extracted from a given energy source. In summary, entropy is a key concept in thermodynamics that measures disorder in a system. It plays a vital role in natural processes by determining the direction and spontaneity of chemical reactions and energy transformations. Understanding entropy helps explain why systems evolve towards greater disorder and why energy conversions are never completely efficient. Please share, subscribe, like, com please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The concept of irreversibility refers to the idea that certain processes cannot be reversed to return to their original state without additional changes or energy input. In thermodynamics, irreversibility is closely related to the second law of thermodynamics, which states that natural processes tend to increase the overall entropy of a system. As a result, once a process has occurred, it cannot spontaneously revert to its initial conditions. 
Irreversible processes are characterized by an increase in entropy, meaning that they lead to a greater degree of disorder in the system. Common examples of irreversible processes include the melting of ice, the mixing of different gases, and the burning of fuel. Once these processes occur, the energy and order that were present in the initial state are transformed into a more disordered state, making it impossible to fully restore the original condition without external intervention. In contrast, reversible processes are idealized processes that can be reversed without any increase in entropy. These processes are theoretical and do not occur in real life because they would require infinitely slow changes and perfect conditions. Real processes are typically irreversible, as they involve friction, turbulence, and other factors that contribute to the increase in entropy. The concept of irreversibility has significant implications in various fields, including physics, chemistry, and engineering. It helps explain why certain reactions occur spontaneously and why energy conversions are never completely efficient. Understanding irreversibility is crucial for analyzing thermodynamic cycles, designing efficient engines, and studying the behavior of complex systems. In summary, irreversibility is the concept that certain processes cannot be reversed without additional energy or changes to the system. It is closely related to the increase in entropy and has important implications for understanding natural processes, energy transformations, and the behavior of physical systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I re please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The third law of thermodynamics states that as the temperature of a perfect crystal approaches absolute zero, the entropy of the crystal approaches a minimum value, typically considered to be zero. Absolute zero is the theoretical lowest temperature, measured as zero Kelvin, where all molecular motion ceases. This law highlights the behavior of systems at very low temperatures. As a substance cools down towards absolute zero, its particles become more ordered and the entropy decreases. For a perfect crystal, the arrangement of particles becomes completely ordered, leading to minimal entropy. However, it is important to note that achieving absolute zero is practically impossible due to the limitations imposed by the laws of thermodynamics. The third law has significant implications in various scientific fields. It provides a reference point for the calculation of absolute entropies of substances. By establishing a baseline of zero entropy for perfect crystals at absolute zero, scientists can measure and compare the entropy of different substances at higher temperatures. Additionally, the third law helps explain the behavior of materials at very low temperatures, including phenomena such as superconductivity and superfluidity. These states of matter exhibit unique properties that arise from the quantum mechanical behavior of particles as they approach absolute zero. In summary, the third law of thermodynamics states that the entropy of a perfect crystal approaches zero as its temperature approaches absolute zero. This law is essential for understanding the behavior of materials at low temperatures and provides a foundation for calculating absolute entropy values for various substances. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly of please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Absolute zero is the theoretical lowest temperature that can be achieved, defined as zero Kelvin or minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, the motion of particles is minimal and they occupy the lowest possible energy state. Absolute zero represents a point where all thermal motion ceases and a perfect crystal would have zero entropy. The theoretical implications of absolute zero are significant in various fields of physics and chemistry. Firstly, it serves as a reference point for temperature scales. The Kelvin scale is based on absolute zero, allowing scientists to measure thermal energy in a consistent manner. Secondly, absolute zero has profound implications for the behavior of materials. 
As substances approach this temperature, they exhibit unique quantum phenomena. For instance, certain materials become superconductors, allowing electric current to flow without resistance. Others may enter a state called superfluidity, where they flow without viscosity. Moreover, absolute zero challenges our understanding of thermodynamics and statistical mechanics. The third law of thermodynamics states that reaching absolute zero is impossible in practice. While scientists can get very close to absolute zero, they cannot achieve it due to various physical limitations and the fundamental properties of matter. In summary, absolute zero is the theoretical lowest temperature where all particle motion stops and entropy reaches its minimum. Its implications extend to temperature measurement, the behavior of materials at low temperatures, and the principles of thermodynamics and quantum mechanics. Understanding absolute zero is crucial for advancing our knowledge of physics and the fundamental laws governing the universe. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermodynamics has a wide range of applications across various fields, impacting both scientific research and practical engineering. One of the primary applications is in the design and analysis of engines, such as internal combustion engines and steam turbines. Engineers use thermodynamic principles to optimize the efficiency of these engines, ensuring they convert fuel energy into mechanical work effectively. In the field of refrigeration and air conditioning, thermodynamics plays a crucial role. Refrigeration cycles rely on the principles of heat transfer and work to move heat from a cooler area to a warmer area effectively cooling spaces or preserving food. Understanding thermodynamic cycles helps engineers design more efficient cooling systems. Thermodynamics is also essential in chemical processes, particularly in understanding reaction mechanisms and energy changes during chemical reactions. Industries utilize thermodynamic data to optimize reaction conditions, improve yields, and design reactors for chemical production. In the realm of materials science, thermodynamics helps explain phase changes, such as melting, boiling, and crystallization. This understanding is vital for developing new materials and optimizing processes like alloy production or polymer synthesis. Additionally, thermodynamics plays a significant role in energy production and management. In power plants, thermodynamic cycles convert thermal energy from fuel sources into electrical energy. Knowledge of thermodynamics aids in developing renewable energy technologies, such as solar thermal systems and geothermal energy. Lastly, thermodynamics contributes to biological and environmental sciences. It helps explain processes such as metabolism in living organisms and energy transfer in ecosystems. By understanding thermodynamic principles, researchers can better comprehend how energy flows through different systems. In summary, the applications of thermodynamics are vast and diverse, spanning engine design, refrigeration, chemical processes, materials science, energy production, and biological systems. Its principles are crucial for optimizing efficiency, improving technology, and advancing scientific understanding in various fields. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Practical examples of thermodynamics in action include engines, refrigerators, and heat pumps, all of which rely on thermodynamic principles to function effectively. Engines. Internal combustion engines, commonly found in vehicles, operate based on the principles of thermodynamics. In these engines, fuel is burned to create heat, which generates gas expansion. This expansion pushes the pistons, converting thermal energy into mechanical work. The efficiency of an engine is determined by how well it converts fuel energy into useful work. And thermodynamic cycles, such as the auto or diesel cycles, describe these processes. Refrigerators. Refrigerators use thermodynamic principles to transfer heat from a cooler space to a warmer one effectively keeping food and drinks cold. 
The refrigeration cycle involves four main processes, compression, condensation, expansion, and evaporation. The refrigerant absorbs heat from the interior of the refrigerator and evaporates into a gas. This gas is then compressed, raising its temperature and pressure. The hot gas releases heat to the outside environment as it condenses back into a liquid, which is then expanded to continue the cycle. This process demonstrates how thermodynamics allows heat to flow against its natural direction. Heat pumps. Heat pumps operate similarly to refrigerators, but are designed to provide heating. They can transfer heat from a cooler outdoor environment to a warmer indoor space. In heating mode, a heat pump extracts heat from the outside air or ground. Even in cold conditions, the refrigerant absorbs heat and evaporates, then is compressed to increase its temperature. The hot refrigerant then releases heat indoors as it condenses. Heat pumps are efficient because they can move more energy than they consume, effectively utilizing thermodynamic principles for heating. In summary, engines, refrigerators, and heat pumps are practical applications of thermodynamics that illustrate how energy is transformed and transferred in real-world systems. Understanding these principles enables engineers to design efficient systems for transportation, food preservation, and climate control. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before dis please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Thermodynamics plays a crucial role in energy systems and industrial processes by providing the principles needed to analyze and optimize energy conversion and transfer. In energy systems, such as power plants, thermodynamic cycles are employed to convert thermal energy from fuel sources into electricity. For example, in fossil fuel power plants, the combustion of coal, oil, or natural gas generates heat, which is used to produce steam. This steam drives turbines connected to generators, converting thermal energy into electrical energy. Engineers apply thermodynamic principles to maximize the efficiency of these processes, ensuring that as much energy as possible is converted into electricity while minimizing waste. In renewable energy systems, such as solar thermal power plants, thermodynamics is used to capture and convert solar energy into usable thermal energy. The collected heat is then used to produce steam, driving turbines to generate electricity. Similarly, in geothermal energy systems, heat from the Earth's interior is harnessed to produce steam for electricity generation, demonstrating the application of thermodynamic concepts in sustainable energy production. In industrial processes, thermodynamics is essential for understanding and controlling chemical reactions. Industries rely on thermodynamic data to determine reaction feasibility optimize reaction conditions, and improve yield. For instance, in the chemical manufacturing sector, thermodynamic principles guide the design of reactors and separation processes to enhance efficiency and reduce energy consumption. Thermodynamics is also applied in processes such as distillation, refrigeration, and heat exchange, where heat transfer and energy management are critical. Engineers design equipment like heat exchangers to transfer heat between different fluids efficiently, reducing energy losses and improving process sustainability. In summary, thermodynamics is fundamental to energy systems and industrial processes. It provides the framework for analyzing energy conversion, optimizing efficiency, and guiding the design of equipment and systems across various sectors. Understanding thermodynamic principles is vital for developing effective and sustainable energy solutions in both traditional and renewable energy systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negative. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetism is a fundamental branch of physics that studies the interactions between electric charges and magnetic fields. This field encompasses a wide range of phenomena, from the behavior of electric currents to the properties of electromagnetic waves. The foundation of electromagnetism is rooted in four fundamental equations, known as Maxwell's equations. 
These equations describe how electric fields and magnetic fields are generated and altered by each other and by charges and currents. They reveal that electric fields are produced by stationary charges, while magnetic fields arise from moving charges or currents. Additionally, a changing magnetic field can induce an electric field, leading to the phenomenon known as electromagnetic induction. One of the most significant aspects of electromagnetism is the relationship between electricity and magnetism. Electric currents produce magnetic fields, which can be observed in everyday devices such as electromagnets and electric motors. Conversely, magnetic fields can influence the movement of electric charges, forming the basis for many technologies, including generators and transformers. Electromagnetism also plays a crucial role in the propagation of electromagnetic waves, which include visible light, radio waves, and X-rays. These waves are generated by the oscillation of electric and magnetic fields and travel through space at the speed of light. The study of electromagnetic waves has led to numerous technological advancements, including wireless communication, broadcasting, and medical imaging techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging. In summary, electromagnetism is a vital area of physics that explores the interactions between electric charges and magnetic fields. It is governed by Maxwell's equations and encompasses a wide range of phenomena, including electric currents, magnetic fields, and electromagnetic waves. Understanding electromagnetism is essential for various applications in technology, communications, and scientific research. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetism is a branch of physics that focuses on the study of electric and magnetic fields and their interactions. It encompasses the phenomena associated with electric charges, electric currents, and the forces they exert on each other. Electromagnetism is one of the four fundamental forces of nature, alongside gravity, the weak nuclear force, and the strong nuclear force. At its core, Electromagnetism describes how electric charges create electric fields and how these electric fields, in turn, can produce magnetic fields. A stationary electric charge generates an electric field around it, while a moving electric charge, or electric current, produces a magnetic field. This relationship between electricity and magnetism is fundamental to understanding a wide range of physical phenomena. The key principles of electromagnetism are encapsulated in four equations known as Maxwell's equations. These equations describe how electric and magnetic fields interact and how they propagate through space. They reveal that changing electric fields can induce magnetic fields and vice versa, leading to the concept of electromagnetic induction. This principle is the basis for many technologies, including electric generators and transformers. Electromagnetism also explains the behavior of electromagnetic waves, which are oscillating electric and magnetic fields that travel through space. These waves include visible light, radio waves, microwaves, and X-rays. Electromagnetic waves propagate at the speed of light and play a crucial role in communication technologies, such as radio, television, and wireless networks. In summary, Electromagnetism is the study of electric and magnetic fields and their interactions. It is governed by fundamental principles that explain how electric charges create fields, how these fields interact, and how they give rise to electromagnetic waves. Understanding electromagnetism is essential for a wide range of scientific and technological applications. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The historical development of electromagnetism spans several centuries, marked by key discoveries and contributions from various scientists. This journey began with Charles Augustin de Coulomb in the 18th century, who formulated Coulomb's law. This law describes the force between two charged objects, establishing a foundational understanding of electrostatics. 
Coulomb's work laid the groundwork for future studies of electric forces and interactions. In the early 19th century, scientists like André-Marie Ampere and George Simon Ohm expanded on these ideas. Ampere investigated the relationship between electric currents and magnetic fields, leading to Ampere's law, which quantifies the magnetic force between two parallel currents. Ohm's work on electric circuits, summarized in Ohm's law, established a fundamental relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in electrical systems. Another significant contributor was Michael Faraday, who conducted pioneering experiments on electromagnetic induction. Faraday discovered that a changing magnetic field can induce an electric current in a conductor, a phenomenon known as electromagnetic induction. His work laid the foundation for electric generators and transformers, leading to the development of electrical engineering. James Clerk Maxwell, building on the work of his predecessors, unified the concepts of electricity and magnetism in the mid-19th century. He formulated Maxwell's equations, a set of four fundamental equations that describe how electric and magnetic fields interact and propagate. These equations demonstrated that electric and magnetic fields are interrelated and can produce electromagnetic waves, traveling at the speed of light. Maxwell's work revolutionized physics, providing a comprehensive theoretical framework for electromagnetism. His equations not only explained existing phenomena, but also predicted new ones, influencing the development of technologies such as radio, television, and wireless communication. In summary, the historical background of electromagnetism spans from Coulomb's foundational studies of electrostatics to Maxwell's unification of electricity and magnetism. Key figures, including Ampere, Ohm, and Faraday, contributed to the understanding of electric and magnetic phenomena, leading to the formulation of Maxwell's equations, which remains central to the study of electromagnetism today. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electric charges are fundamental properties of matter that determine how objects interact with each other. There are two types of electric charges, positive and negative. Like charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract. The unit of electric charge is the Coulomb, named after Charles Augustin de Coulomb, who studied the forces between charged objects. Electric fields are regions around charged objects where electric forces can be felt. An electric field is created by a charged object and can exert a force on other charges placed within the field. The strength and direction of the electric field are represented by electric field lines which radiate outward from positive charges and inward toward negative charges. The electric field strength is measured in volts per meter. Magnetic fields are produced by moving electric charges, such as those found in electric currents. A magnetic field exerts a force on other moving charges or magnetic materials. Similar to electric fields, magnetic fields can be visualized using field lines, which form closed loops around the source of the magnetic field. The strength of a magnetic field is measured in Teslas. The interaction between electric fields and magnetic fields is a central concept in electromagnetism. A changing electric field can induce a magnetic field, and a changing magnetic field can induce an electric field. This interplay is the basis for many technological applications, including electric generators, motors, and transformers. In summary, Electric charges are properties that cause attraction and repulsion between objects. Electric fields are created by these charges and exert forces on other charges, while magnetic fields arise from moving charges. The relationship between electric and magnetic fields is fundamental to the study of electromagnetism and underlies many modern technologies. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, Kindly avoid, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electric fields are regions around electric charges where other charges experience a force. 
The strength of an electric field depends on the amount of charge creating it and the distance from the charge. The electric field E can be mathematically expressed as the force F experienced by a positive test charge Q placed in the field divided by the magnitude of that charge. The formula is represented as E equals F divided by Q. The unit of electric field strength is volts per meter. Coulomb's law, formulated by Charles Augustin de Coulomb in the 18th century, describes the force between two point charges. According to Coulomb's law, the force F between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges, Q1 and Q2, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance, R between them. The formula is expressed as F equals K multiplied by Q1 multiplied by Q2 divided by R squared. Here, K is Coulomb's constant, approximately equal to 8.85 times 10 to the 9th Newton square meter per square Coulomb. Coulomb's law states that like charges repel each other, while opposite charges attract. This fundamental principle explains many interactions in electrostatics. The force acts along the line connecting the two charges, and the electric field created by a charge can be used to determine the force on another charge placed in its vicinity. In summary, electric fields represent the influence of electric charges on other charges in their vicinity. Coulomb's law quantifies the force between two-point charges, establishing a foundational relationship in electrostatics. Understanding electric fields and Coulomb's law is essential for exploring more complex concepts in electromagnetism and their applications in technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electric charge is a fundamental property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electric field. There are two types of electric charges, positive and negative. Positive charges are carried by protons, while negative charges are carried by electrons. Like charges repel each other, whereas opposite charges attract. The unit of electric charge is the Coulomb, which quantifies the amount of charge present. The electric field is a concept that describes the influence a charged object has on other charges in its vicinity. It is a vector field, meaning it has both magnitude and direction. The electric field E is defined as the force F experienced by a positive test charge Q placed in the field divided by the magnitude of that charge. Mathematically, this is expressed as E equals F divided by Q. The unit of the electric field is volts per meter. An electric field exists around any charged object, and its strength depends on the amount of charge and the distance from the charge. The direction of the electric field is outward from positive charges and inward toward negative charges. The field can be visualized using field lines, which show the direction and strength of the electric field. The closer the lines are together, the stronger the electric field in that region. In summary, electric charge is a basic property of matter that determines how objects interact with each other. The electric field is a way to represent the influence of a charged object on other charges in its vicinity, providing a framework for understanding electric forces and interactions. Understanding electric charge and the electric field is essential for studying electromagnetism and its various applications in technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Coulomb's law describes how electric charges interact with each other. Formulated by Charles Augustin de Coulomb in the 18th century, this law quantifies the electrostatic force between two-point charges. According to Coulomb's law, the force F between two charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance, R, between them. Mathematically, Coulomb's law can be expressed as F equals K multiplied by the absolute value of Q1 multiplied by the absolute value of Q2 divided by R squared. In this equation, K is Coulomb's constant, 
which has a value of approximately 8.85 times 10 to the 9th Newton square meter per square coulomb. The charges Q1 and Q2 represent the amounts of the two interacting charges, while R is the distance between their centers. The law indicates that like charges, which can be both positive or both negative, repel each other, while opposite charges attract. This means that if both charges are positive, they will push away from each other. If one charge is positive and the other is negative, they will pull toward each other. Coulomb's law also demonstrates that the strength of the electrostatic force decreases as the distance between the charges increases. This inverse square relationship means that if the distance between two charges is doubled, the force between them becomes one-fourth as strong. In summary, Coulomb's law provides a mathematical framework for understanding how electric charges interact. It describes the nature of the forces between charged objects, showing that like charges repel while opposite charges attract. This fundamental principle is essential for studying electrostatics and understanding the behavior of charged particles in various physical systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electric potential, often referred to as voltage, is a measure of the potential energy per unit charge at a specific point in an electric field. It quantifies the work done to move a positive test charge from a reference point, typically infinity, to a given point in the field without any acceleration. The unit of electric potential is the volt, named after the Italian scientist Alessandro Volta. Electric potential is significant because it helps to understand how electric charges behave in an electric field. A higher electric potential indicates that a positive charge would have more potential energy at that point. Conversely, a lower electric potential means the charge would have less potential energy. The difference in electric potential between two points is what drives the flow of electric charge, creating an electric current. The concept of electric potential is essential in various applications, including electrical circuits, where it determines how current flows through components. For example, in a simple circuit with a battery, the battery provides a voltage that pushes the electric charges through the circuit, powering devices such as lights or motors. Additionally, Electric potential plays a crucial role in the design of capacitors, which store electrical energy. The amount of energy stored in a capacitor is directly related to the electric potential across its plates. Understanding electric potential is also vital in fields like electrostatics, electronics, and engineering, where controlling and manipulating electric fields is necessary for various technologies. In summary, Electric potential is a measure of potential energy per unit charge in an electric field. It is significant because it explains how electric charges interact and flow, influencing the behavior of electrical circuits and devices. Understanding electric potential is essential for a wide range of scientific and technological applications. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, Kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Magnetic fields are regions around magnetic materials or moving electric charges where magnetic forces can be detected. They are represented by magnetic field lines that emerge from the north pole of a magnet and enter through the south pole. The strength and direction of a magnetic field are described by the density and orientation of these lines. The unit of measurement for magnetic field strength is the Tesla. Ampere's law, formulated by Andre Marie Ampere in the early 19th century, relates the magnetic field around a conductor to the electric current flowing through it. The law states that the line integral of the magnetic field, B, around a closed loop is proportional to the total electric current, I passing through that loop. This can be mathematically expressed as the integral of B dot DL equals zero multiplied by I, where zero is the permeability of free space, a constant that describes how magnetic fields interact with materials. 
Ampere's law demonstrates that an electric current creates a magnetic field. For instance, when a current flows through a straight wire, it generates a magnetic field that forms concentric circles around the wire. The direction of the magnetic field can be determined using the right-hand rule, which states that if you point your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field lines. This law is fundamental in understanding how electric currents and magnetic fields interact, leading to various applications, including the design of electric motors, generators, and transformers. In these devices, the relationship between electric currents and magnetic fields is exploited to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy and vice versa. In summary, magnetic fields are areas where magnetic forces are present, and Ampere's law quantifies the relationship between electric currents and the magnetic fields they create. This understanding is essential for numerous technologies that rely on the interplay between electricity and magnetism. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Magnetic forces are the attractive or repulsive interactions between magnetic materials or moving electric charges. These forces arise due to the presence of a magnetic field, which is generated by magnets or electric currents. Magnetic forces can affect various materials, including ferromagnetic substances like iron, which can become magnetized and exhibit strong magnetic properties. The magnetic field is a vector field that surrounds magnets and electric currents. It is represented by magnetic field lines, which indicate the direction and strength of the field. The lines emerge from the north pole of a magnet and loop back into the south pole. The closer the lines are to each other, the stronger the magnetic field in that region. The unit of magnetic field strength is the Tesla. Magnetic forces can be observed in everyday life. For instance, when you bring two magnets close together, they either attract or repel each other depending on their orientation. Opposite poles, such as north and south, attract, while like poles, such as north and north, repel. This behavior is a result of the magnetic field created by the magnets. The interaction between magnetic fields and moving charges is also crucial in understanding magnetic forces. When a charged particle moves through a magnetic field, it experiences a force known as the Lorentz force. The direction of this force is perpendicular to both the direction of the magnetic field and the velocity of the charged particle. This principle is applied in devices like electric motors, where electric currents generate magnetic fields that create motion. In summary, magnetic forces are the interactions caused by magnetic fields, which can attract or repel magnetic materials and influence moving charges. Understanding magnetic forces and the behavior of magnetic fields is essential for many applications in technology and science, from simple magnets to complex electromagnetic devices. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Ampere's law describes the relationship between electric current and the magnetic fields they produce. Formulated by André-Marie Ampere in the early 19th century, this law provides a mathematical framework for understanding how electric currents create magnetic fields in their vicinity. According to Ampere's law, the line integral of the magnetic field, B, around a closed loop is directly proportional to the total electric current, I, passing through that loop. This can be mathematically expressed as the integral of B dot dl equals zero multiplied by I. In this equation, zero is the permeability of free space, a constant that indicates how magnetic fields interact with materials. Ampere's law indicates that when an electric current flows through a conductor, it generates a magnetic field around that conductor. For example, a straight wire carrying an electric current produces a magnetic field that forms concentric circles around the wire. The strength of this magnetic field decreases with distance from the wire. 
The direction of the magnetic field can be determined using the right hand rule. If you point your thumb in the direction of the current, your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field lines. This law is fundamental in various applications, including the design of electrical devices, such as electric motors and transformers. In electric motors, for instance, the interaction between electric currents and magnetic fields creates motion, enabling the conversion of electrical energy into mechanical energy. In summary, Ampere's law establishes a clear relationship between electric current and magnetic fields. It shows that an electric current generates a magnetic field around it, a principle that is essential for understanding electromagnetism and its many applications in technology and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negative. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetic induction is the process by which a changing magnetic field induces an electric current in a conductor. This phenomenon is fundamental to the operation of many electrical devices, such as generators and transformers. The principles of electromagnetic induction were first described by Michael Faraday in the early 19th century. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction states that the induced electromotive force, or voltage, in a closed loop is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through that loop. Magnetic flux is the measure of the amount of magnetic field passing through a given area. Faraday's law can be mathematically expressed as E equals negative df slash dt, where E is the induced electromotive force and F represents the magnetic flux. The negative sign in the equation reflects Lenz's law, which states that the direction of the induced current will always be such that it opposes the change in magnetic flux that produced it. This means that if the magnetic field through a loop increases, the induced current will flow in a direction that creates a magnetic field opposing that increase. Electromagnetic induction is a key principle behind the operation of electrical generators. In a generator, mechanical energy is used to rotate a coil within a magnetic field. This rotation changes the magnetic flux through the coil, inducing an electric current. Similarly, Transformers utilize electromagnetic induction to transfer electrical energy between circuits at different voltage levels. In summary, electromagnetic induction is the process of generating electric current through the change of magnetic fields, described by Faraday's law. This principle is crucial in the design and functioning of various electrical devices and systems, making it a foundational concept in electromagnetism and electrical engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction describes how a changing magnetic field can induce an electric current in a conductor. This law is fundamental to understanding how electrical energy is generated and utilized in various devices. Formulated by the scientist Michael Faraday in the early 19th century, it provides a clear relationship between magnetic fields and electric currents. According to Faraday's law, the induced electromotive force or voltage in a closed loop is directly proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux through that loop. Magnetic flux refers to the amount of magnetic field passing through a given area, which can change if the strength of the magnetic field varies or if the area through which it passes changes. Mathematically, Faraday's law can be expressed as E equals negative df slash dt, where E represents the induced electromotive force and df slash dt is the rate of change of magnetic flux. The negative sign in this equation is important, as it reflects Lenz's law. Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced current will always oppose the change in magnetic flux that produced it. For example, if the magnetic field through a loop increases, the induced current will flow in a direction that creates a magnetic field opposing that increase, thereby trying to maintain equilibrium. Faraday's law has significant applications in various technologies. For instance, 
It is the principle behind electric generators, where mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy by rotating a coil within a magnetic field. It is also crucial in the operation of transformers, which transfer electrical energy between circuits at different voltage levels through electromagnetic induction. In summary, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction illustrates how changes in magnetic fields can induce electric currents in conductors. This principle is foundational in electromagnetism and underpins many modern electrical technologies. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Changing magnetic fields create electric fields through the process of electromagnetic induction. This phenomenon, described by Faraday's law, highlights the interconnectedness of electricity and magnetism. When a magnetic field surrounding a conductor changes, it induces an electric field in the conductor. There are several ways in which magnetic fields can change. For instance, the strength of a magnetic field can vary over time, or the orientation of a magnetic field relative to a conductor can change. When these changes occur, they alter the magnetic flux, which is the measure of the total magnetic field passing through a given area. According to Faraday's law, the induced electric field is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux. This means that the faster the magnetic field changes, the stronger the induced electric field will be. This relationship can be expressed mathematically, showing that the induced electromotive force is equal to the negative rate of change of magnetic flux. The induced electric field can drive electric charges to move within a conductor, generating an electric current. For example, when a coil of wire is placed in a changing magnetic field, the varying magnetic flux through the coil induces an electric current. This principle is the foundation of how generators operate, where mechanical motion is used to create a changing magnetic field that induces electric currents. In summary, changing magnetic fields create electric fields by altering the magnetic flux through a conductor. This process leads to the induction of electric currents illustrating the fundamental connection between electricity and magnetism. Understanding this principle is essential for numerous applications in electrical engineering and technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. If please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, Kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Maxwell's equations are a set of four fundamental equations in electromagnetism that describe how electric and magnetic fields interact with each other and with charges. Formulated by James Clerk Maxwell in the mid-19th century, these equations form the foundation of classical electrodynamics, optics, and electric circuits. The first equation, known as Gauss's law for electricity, states that the electric flux through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed within that surface. This law highlights how electric charges generate electric fields. The second equation, Gauss's law for magnetism, states that the magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero. This indicates that there are no magnetic monopoles. Instead, magnetic field lines always form closed loops meaning that magnetic field lines do not begin or end but rather continue indefinitely. The third equation, Faraday's law of induction, states that a changing magnetic field within a closed loop induces an electromotive force, or voltage, in that loop. This principle is crucial in understanding how electric currents can be generated by changing magnetic fields. The fourth equation, Ampere-Maxwell law, extends Ampere's law by including the effect of changing electric fields on magnetic fields. It states that the magnetic field around a closed loop is proportional to the total current flowing through that loop plus the rate of change of electric flux through the loop. Together, Maxwell's equations elegantly describe the behavior of electric and magnetic fields and their interrelationship. They provide insights into various phenomena, such as electromagnetic waves, which include light, radio waves, and microwaves. These equations have far-reaching implications in modern technology, 
from electrical engineering to telecommunications and beyond. In summary, Maxwell's equations are fundamental to understanding electromagnetism, describing how electric and magnetic fields interact and how they are influenced by electric charges and currents. Their significance extends into many areas of physics and engineering, making them a cornerstone of classical physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Maxwell's equations provide a comprehensive framework for understanding the interplay between electricity and magnetism. Formulated by James Clerk Maxwell in the mid-19th century, these four equations describe how electric charges produce electric fields, how electric currents generate magnetic fields, and how changing electric and magnetic fields interact with each other. The first equation, Gauss's law for electricity, states that the electric flux through a closed surface is proportional to the charge enclosed within that surface. This principle demonstrates how electric charges create electric fields in their vicinity. The second equation, Gauss's law for magnetism, indicates that the total magnetic flux through a closed surface is zero. This implies that magnetic field lines do not begin or end, but instead form closed loops, reinforcing the concept that magnetic monopoles do not exist. The third equation, Faraday's law of induction, explains that a changing magnetic field induces an electromotive force, or voltage, in a closed loop. This principle is essential for understanding how electric currents can be generated by variations in magnetic fields. The fourth equation, known as the Ampere-Maxwell law, combines Ampere's law with Maxwell's addition of the displacement current. It states that the magnetic field around a closed loop is proportional to the total current flowing through that loop and the rate of change of electric flux through the loop. This unification shows that changing electric fields can create magnetic fields, just as electric currents do. Together, these equations elegantly unify electricity and magnetism into a single framework known as electromagnetism. They illustrate that electric fields and magnetic fields are interrelated and can influence each other. For example, electromagnetic waves, which include visible light and radio waves, arise from the oscillation of electric and magnetic fields propagating through space. In summary, Maxwell's equations unify electricity and magnetism by showing how electric charges and currents produce electric and magnetic fields and how these fields interact with each other. This unification has profound implications for our understanding of the physical world and has led to numerous technological advancements in areas such as telecommunications, electrical engineering, and optics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetism has numerous applications that significantly impact our daily lives and various industries. Understanding the principles of electromagnetism allows us to harness electrical energy and magnetic forces for practical uses. One of the most common applications is in electrical power generation and distribution. Generators operate on the principle of electromagnetic induction, where mechanical energy is converted into electrical energy by rotating a coil within a magnetic field. This process enables the generation of electricity used to power homes, businesses, and industries. Another essential application is in electrical motors, which convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. These motors operate based on the interaction between electric currents and magnetic fields, allowing for the functioning of various devices, from household appliances to industrial machinery. Transformers are also vital in the distribution of electrical energy. They utilize electromagnetic induction to transfer electrical energy between circuits at different voltage levels, ensuring that electricity is transmitted efficiently over long distances while maintaining safety. Electromagnetism plays a crucial role in communication technologies. Radio waves, which are a type of electromagnetic radiation, 
are used for broadcasting signals over long distances. Devices such as radios, televisions, and mobile phones rely on these electromagnetic waves for transmitting information. In the field of medicine, electromagnetism is used in various diagnostic and treatment techniques. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, utilizes strong magnetic fields and radio waves to produce detailed images of the body's internal structures, helping doctors diagnose medical conditions. Electromagnetic fields are also employed in transportation systems. For example, maglev trains use magnetic levitation to reduce friction and allow for high-speed travel. The interaction between electric and magnetic fields enables these trains to glide above tracks, providing a smooth and efficient mode of transport. In summary, the applications of electromagnetism are vast and diverse, encompassing power generation, electric motors, transformers, communication technologies, medical imaging, and transportation systems. These applications demonstrate the fundamental importance of electromagnetism in modern society and technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetism plays a vital role in technology, particularly in the development and operation of motors, generators, and transformers. Each of these devices relies on the principles of electromagnetism to function effectively. Electric motors are one of the most common applications of electromagnetism. They convert electrical energy into mechanical energy by utilizing the interaction between electric currents and magnetic fields. When an electric current passes through a coil of wire within a magnetic field, a force is generated that causes the coil to rotate. This rotation can be harnessed to power various devices, from household appliances like fans and washing machines to industrial machinery. Generators operate on the principle of electromagnetic induction, which is the process of converting mechanical energy into electrical energy. When a coil of wire is rotated within a magnetic field, it induces an electric current in the wire. This principle is the basis for electricity generation in power plants, where turbines driven by wind, water, or steam rotate coils within magnetic fields to produce electrical energy. The electricity generated is then distributed for use in homes, businesses, and industries. Transformers are essential for the efficient transmission of electrical energy. They work by utilizing electromagnetic induction to transfer electrical energy between two circuits at different voltage levels. A transformer consists of two coils of wire wrapped around a magnetic core. When alternating current flows through one coil, it creates a changing magnetic field that induces a voltage in the second coil. This allows transformers to step up or step down voltage levels, ensuring that electricity can be transmitted over long distances with minimal energy loss while also making it safe for use in homes and businesses. In summary, the practical uses of electromagnetism and technology are evident in electric motors, generators, and transformers. These devices are crucial for converting and transferring energy, making electromagnetism an essential aspect of modern electrical and electronic systems. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Electromagnetic waves are a form of energy that travels through space at the speed of light. They consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields and can propagate through a vacuum or various media. Electromagnetic waves play a crucial role in communication systems, enabling the transmission of information over long distances. One of the key features of electromagnetic waves is their wide range of frequencies, which are categorized into different bands. These bands include radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, X-rays, and gamma rays. In communication systems, radio waves and microwaves are primarily used due to their ability to carry information effectively. Radio waves are utilized for various communication applications, including broadcasting, 
mobile phone networks, and satellite communications. When information, such as audio or video, is converted into an electrical signal, it can be modulated onto a radio wave. This modulation involves altering the wave's amplitude, frequency, or phase to encode the information. The modulated wave can then be transmitted through the air and received by antennas, which demodulate the signal to retrieve the original information. Microwaves are used in technologies such as microwave communication systems and radar. Microwave signals can be focused into narrow beams, allowing for high data transmission rates and effective point-to-point -point communication. Additionally, microwaves are employed in satellite communication, where signals are sent to and from satellites orbiting the Earth, enabling global communication. Electromagnetic waves also play a role in fiber optic communication. In this technology, information is transmitted as light signals through thin strands of glass or plastic fibers. The light signals are generated by lasers or light-emitting diodes and can travel long distances with minimal loss of information. Fiber optic communication is widely used for high-speed internet and telecommunications. In summary, electromagnetic waves are fundamental to communication systems. Their ability to carry information over vast distances has enabled the development of various technologies, including radio broadcasting, mobile communications, satellite communications, and fiber optic networks. The role of electromagnetic waves in communication is essential for connecting people and facilitating the exchange of information in the modern world. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Waves are disturbances that transfer energy from one location to another without causing any permanent displacement of the medium through which they travel. They are a fundamental concept in physics and can be found in various forms across different fields, including mechanics, electromagnetism, and even in quantum mechanics. Waves can be classified into two primary types, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves require a medium, such as air, water, or solid materials, to propagate. Examples of mechanical waves include sound waves, which travel through air, water waves, which travel across the surface of a body of water, and seismic waves which are generated by earthquakes and travel through the Earth. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves do not require a medium and can travel through a vacuum. These waves are created by the oscillation of electric and magnetic fields and include radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. Electromagnetic waves play a crucial role in various technologies, such as communication systems and medical imaging. Waves are characterized by several properties, including wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and speed. The wavelength is the distance between successive points of similar phase in a wave, such as the distance between two consecutive peaks. Frequency refers to the number of wave cycles that pass a given point in a specific amount of time, usually measured in hertz. Amplitude represents the maximum displacement of points on a wave from its rest position and is related to the energy carried by the wave. The speed of a wave is determined by the medium through which it travels and is calculated as the product of its wavelength and frequency. In summary, waves are essential phenomena that transfer energy through different media or even through empty space. Understanding the nature of waves and their properties is fundamental to many scientific disciplines and has numerous practical applications in technology and everyday life. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Waves are disturbances that transfer energy from one place to another without permanently displacing the medium through which they move. They can be found in various forms and are fundamental to many natural phenomena and technologies. Waves can be classified into two main types, mechanical waves and electromagnetic waves. Mechanical waves require a medium, 
such as air, water, or solid materials, to travel through. Examples of mechanical waves include sound waves, which propagate through air and water waves, which move across the surface of a body of water. Seismic waves generated by earthquakes are another example of mechanical waves. Electromagnetic waves, on the other hand, do not need a medium and can travel through a vacuum. These waves consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields and include radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. Electromagnetic waves are essential in communication, medical imaging, and various technologies. Waves are characterized by several key properties, including wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and speed. Wavelength is the distance between successive points of a wave, such as from one peak to the next. Frequency is the number of complete wave cycles that pass a given point in a specific amount of time, usually measured in hertz. Amplitude measures the maximum displacement of points on a wave from its rest position, indicating the wave's energy. The speed of a wave is determined by the medium it travels through and is calculated as the product of its wavelength and frequency. In summary, waves are essential phenomena that transport energy through different media or through empty space, making them a crucial aspect of both nature and technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Waves have several general characteristics that define their behavior and properties. These characteristics include wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and wave speed. Wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points of the same phase in a wave, such as the distance from one peak to the next or from one trough to the next. Wavelength is typically represented by the Greek letter lambda and is measured in units such as meters. It is an essential characteristic because it determines the type of wave and its interaction with the medium through which it travels. Frequency refers to the number of complete wave cycles that pass a specific point in a given amount of time. It is measured in hertz, with one hertz equating to one cycle per second. Frequency is inversely related to wavelength. As the frequency increases, the wavelength decreases, and vice versa. Frequency plays a crucial role in determining the energy of a wave, with higher frequencies generally carrying more energy. Amplitude is the maximum displacement of points on a wave from their rest position. It measures the height of the wave from its equilibrium position to its peak or trough. Amplitude is directly related to the energy carried by the wave. Higher amplitude indicates greater energy. For example, in sound waves, a greater amplitude corresponds to a louder sound. Wave speed is the speed at which a wave travels through a medium. It is calculated as the product of wavelength and frequency. Wave speed can vary depending on the type of wave and the medium it travels through. For instance, sound waves travel faster in water than in air, while light waves travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. In summary, the general characteristics of waves, including wavelength, frequency, amplitude, and wave speed are fundamental to understanding how waves behave and interact with their environment. These properties are essential for studying various types of waves, from sound and water waves to electromagnetic waves. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Mechanical and electromagnetic waves are two fundamental types of waves that differ in their nature and the mediums through which they propagate. Mechanical waves require a medium to travel through, which can be solid, liquid, or gas. Examples of mechanical waves include sound waves, which travel through air and water waves, which move across the surface of a body of water. Mechanical waves can be further classified into two categories, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. In transverse waves, the displacement of the medium is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel, such as in waves on a string. In longitudinal waves, the displacement is parallel to the direction of wave travel. 
as seen in sound waves where particles of air compress and expand. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves do not require a medium and can travel through a vacuum, such as outer space. These waves are created by the oscillation of electric and magnetic fields and include a broad spectrum of waves, such as radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. Electromagnetic waves can propagate in a vacuum and do not require any material substance to carry their energy. Another key difference between mechanical and electromagnetic waves is their speed. The speed of mechanical waves depends on the properties of the medium, such as its density and elasticity. For example, sound waves travel faster in water than in air. In contrast, electromagnetic waves travel at the speed of light in a vacuum, which is approximately 300,000 kilometers per second. In summary, mechanical waves require a medium to propagate, while electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum. Mechanical waves can be classified into transverse and longitudinal waves, while electromagnetic waves consist of a spectrum of different types. Understanding the distinctions between these two types of waves is crucial in the study of wave phenomena in physics. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Waves can be classified into several types based on their characteristics and the manner in which they propagate. The main types of waves include mechanical waves, electromagnetic waves, transverse waves, and longitudinal waves. Mechanical waves require a medium to travel through, which can be solid, liquid, or gas. These waves can be further divided into two main categories, transverse waves and longitudinal waves. Transverse waves are characterized by particle movement that is perpendicular to the direction of wave travel. In these waves, the medium moves up and down while the wave moves horizontally. A common example of a transverse wave is a wave on a string or water waves where the surface of the water moves up and down. Longitudinal waves, on the other hand, involve particle movement that is parallel to the direction of wave travel. In these waves, the medium compresses and rarefies as the wave moves through it. Sound waves in air are a primary example of longitudinal waves, where air particles oscillate back and forth along the same direction as the sound wave. Electromagnetic waves do not require a medium to propagate and can travel through a vacuum. These waves consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields and include a wide range of types, such as radio waves, microwaves, infrared radiation, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays, and gamma rays. Electromagnetic waves can move through space without the need for any material substance, making them unique compared to mechanical waves. Additionally, waves can be classified based on their behavior and interaction with the environment. Some waves can reflect, refract, and diffract, depending on the conditions of the medium and the obstacles they encounter. In summary, the primary types of waves include mechanical waves, which require a medium and can be either transverse or longitudinal, and electromagnetic waves, which can travel through a vacuum and consist of various forms of radiation. Understanding these different types of waves is essential in various scientific fields and applications. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Bef Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Transverse waves are a type of wave where the particle movement is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. In other words, as the wave moves forward, the medium's particles move up and down or side to side. This characteristic makes transverse waves distinct from longitudinal waves where particle movement is parallel to the wave direction. One of the most common examples of transverse waves is light waves. Light waves are electromagnetic waves that do not require a medium to travel through. Instead, they consist of oscillating electric and magnetic fields. This perpendicular motion allows light to propagate through the vacuum of space, 
enabling us to see the world around us. Another example of transverse waves can be found in water waves. When a stone is dropped into a pond, waves travel outward in circles. In this case, the water particles move up and down as the wave passes, creating a series of peaks and troughs on the surface. The upward and downward motion of the water is perpendicular to the direction of the wave's travel across the water's surface. In summary, transverse waves are defined by their perpendicular particle movement relative to the wave's direction. Common examples include light waves and water waves, both of which demonstrate this fundamental characteristic of wave behavior. Understanding transverse waves is essential in various fields, including physics, engineering, and environmental science. Please share, subscribe, like, comment. Please share, subscribe, like, comment. Press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Longitudinal waves are a type of wave in which the particle movement occurs parallel to the direction in which the wave travels. In these waves, particles of the medium compress and rarefy as the wave moves through it. This characteristic distinguishes longitudinal waves from transverse waves, where the particle movement is perpendicular to the wave direction. One of the most common examples of longitudinal waves is sound waves. When sound is produced, such as when a person speaks or a musical instrument plays, the vibrations created by the source cause the air particles to oscillate back and forth along the same direction as the sound wave. These oscillations create regions of compression, where particles are close together, and rarefaction, where particles are spread apart. As the sound wave travels through the air, it moves these compressions and rarefactions, allowing the sound to be heard at a distance. Another example of longitudinal waves is seismic waves, which are generated by earthquakes. When an earthquake occurs, energy is released in the form of seismic waves that travel through the earth. There are different types of seismic waves, but the primary type that behaves as a longitudinal wave is called a primary or P wave. These waves cause particles in the ground to move back and forth in the same direction as the wave, creating areas of compression and rarefaction that can be detected by seismographs. In summary, longitudinal waves are characterized by parallel particle movement relative to the wave's direction. Common examples include sound waves and seismic waves, both of which demonstrate this fundamental behavior. Understanding longitudinal waves is essential in fields such as acoustics, geology, and engineering. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity. If please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The behavior of waves in different mediums is influenced by the properties of the mediums through which they travel. Various factors, such as density, elasticity, and temperature, can affect how waves propagate, reflecting, refracting, or absorbing energy as they move. When a wave encounters a boundary between two different mediums, it can undergo reflection. Reflection occurs when a wave bounces off a surface, returning into the original medium. An example of this is seen when light waves strike a mirror, reflecting back and allowing us to see our image. Refraction is another important behavior of waves as they move from one medium to another. This phenomenon occurs when a wave changes speed upon entering a different medium, leading to a change in direction. For example, when light travels from air into water, it slows down and bends, causing objects submerged in water to appear distorted. Refraction is also crucial in lenses, where it allows light to focus or spread. Waves can also experience diffraction, which is the bending of waves around obstacles or through openings. This effect is noticeable when sound waves pass through a narrow doorway, allowing us to hear sounds from outside even if we are not directly in line with the source. Similarly, light waves can diffract when they pass through small slits, creating patterns of light and dark regions. Additionally, waves can be absorbed by a medium, converting their energy into other forms, such as heat. For example, sound waves may lose energy as they pass through thick materials, 
causing them to sound quieter on the other side. In summary, the behavior of waves in different mediums includes reflection, refraction, diffraction, and absorption. These behaviors depend on the properties of the mediums and play a significant role in various applications, from acoustics to optics. Understanding these behaviors is essential in physics, engineering, and environmental science. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Wave behavior refers to the various ways in which waves interact with their environment as they propagate through different mediums. Key behaviors of waves include reflection, refraction, diffraction, and interference. Reflection occurs when a wave encounters a barrier or surface and bounces back into the original medium. A common example of reflection is when light waves strike a mirror, resulting in the formation of a clear image. The angle at which the wave hits the surface, known as the angle of incidence, is equal to the angle at which it reflects, called the angle of reflection. Refraction happens when a wave passes from one medium to another and changes speed, leading to a change in direction. For instance, when light travels from air into water, it slows down and bends, causing objects underwater to appear shifted from their actual position. Refraction is essential in the design of lenses which focus light to form images. Diffraction is the bending of waves around obstacles or through openings. This behavior is most noticeable with sound waves, allowing us to hear sounds from around corners or through doorways. Similarly, light waves can diffract when they pass through narrow slits, producing patterns of light and dark regions. Interference occurs when two or more waves overlap, resulting in a new wave pattern. This can happen constructively, where waves add together to create a larger amplitude, or destructively, where they cancel each other out. An example of interference is observed in water waves when two waves meet, creating a more complex wave pattern. In summary, wave behavior encompasses reflection, refraction, diffraction, and interference. These interactions are fundamental to understanding how waves travel and interact in various contexts including sound, light, and water waves. Knowledge of wave behavior is crucial in fields such as physics, engineering, and communication technologies. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Reflection is the phenomenon where waves bounce off a surface and change direction without entering the medium. This behavior is observed in various types of waves, including light, sound, and water waves. The principle of reflection can be described using a few key concepts. When a wave encounters a reflective surface, such as a mirror or a smooth body of water, it reflects back into the original medium. The angle at which the wave strikes the surface known as the angle of incidence, is equal to the angle at which it reflects, referred to as the angle of reflection. This relationship is consistent and can be observed in various situations. In the case of light waves, reflection allows us to see images in mirrors. When light hits a smooth mirror surface, it reflects according to the law of reflection, enabling us to see our reflection clearly. This principle is also applied in optical devices, such as telescopes and periscopes, which use mirrors to direct light. Sound waves also reflect off surfaces, which is why we can hear echoes in large open spaces or canyons. When sound waves travel towards a hard surface, such as a wall or a mountain, they bounce back, creating an echo effect. The time delay between the original sound and the echo can be used to measure distances. Water waves also exhibit reflection. When waves reach a solid barrier, like a dock or a seawall, they bounce back into the water, creating patterns of overlapping waves. This reflection can be observed in ponds or lakes when a stone is thrown into the water, causing waves to travel outward and reflect off the shore. In summary, reflection is the process by which waves bounce off surfaces, changing direction while remaining in the original medium.
This behavior is governed by the angles of incidence and reflection and is crucial in various applications, including optics and acoustics. Understanding reflection helps explain how we perceive our surroundings and how waves interact with different environments. Please share, subscribe, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Refraction is the bending of waves as they pass from one medium into another. This phenomenon occurs because waves travel at different speeds in different materials. When a wave crosses the boundary between two mediums, such as air and water, it changes speed, which results in a change in direction. The amount of bending that occurs during refraction depends on the properties of the two mediums involved. For example, light waves travel faster in air than in water. When light enters water from air, it slows down and bends toward the normal line, an imaginary line perpendicular to the surface at the point of entry. Conversely, when light exits water back into air, it speeds up and bends away from the normal line. The angle of incidence is the angle at which the incoming wave strikes the boundary between the two mediums. The angle of refraction is the angle at which the wave travels in the new medium. According to Snell's law, the relationship between these angles is proportional to the ratio of the speeds of the wave in the two mediums. This law can be expressed mathematically, but the key point is that it predicts how much bending will occur based on the properties of the mediums. Refraction is responsible for many everyday phenomena. For instance, when a straw is placed in a glass of water, it appears to be bent at the surface due to the refraction of light. Additionally, Refraction is essential in the functioning of lenses. In cameras, glasses, and microscopes, lenses utilize refraction to focus light, creating clear images. In summary, refraction is the bending of waves as they move from one medium to another, caused by changes in wave speed. This phenomenon plays a crucial role in optics and is observable in everyday situations, influencing how we see the world around us. Understanding refraction helps explain various optical devices and visual effects. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Diffraction is the spreading of waves when they encounter obstacles or pass through narrow openings. This phenomenon occurs with all types of waves, including sound, light, and water waves. Diffraction is most noticeable when the size of the obstacle or opening is similar to the wavelength of the wave. When waves meet an obstacle, they do not simply stop. Instead, they bend around the edges of the obstacle or spread out as they pass through the opening. This bending effect allows waves to propagate into regions that are geometrically shadowed from the original wave source. For example, if a sound wave encounters a doorway, it can still be heard on the other side even if the source of the sound is not directly visible. The waves bend around the edges of the door, allowing them to reach areas that are not in line with the source. In the case of light waves, diffraction can create patterns of light and dark regions known as interference patterns. This effect is often observed in experiments involving slits, such as the double slit experiment. When coherent light passes through two closely spaced slits, it creates a pattern of alternating bright and dark fringes on a screen. This pattern arises because the light waves interfere with each other as they diffract through the slits, leading to constructive and destructive interference. Diffraction is also a significant factor in the design of various technologies. For instance, Diffraction gratings are used in spectrometers to separate light into its component colors based on wavelength. Additionally, the phenomenon plays a role in audio systems, where sound waves can spread around barriers, affecting the quality and directionality of sound in a space. In summary, diffraction is the spreading of waves when they encounter obstacles or narrow openings. This behavior allows waves to propagate into areas that would otherwise be in shadow and is observable in various contexts, including sound and light. Understanding diffraction is essential in fields such as acoustics, optics, and engineering, 
as it impacts how waves interact with their environments. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spread. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Interference is a phenomenon that occurs when two or more waves overlap and combine to form a new wave pattern. This interaction can lead to two main types of interference, constructive interference and destructive interference. Constructive interference happens when the peaks of one wave align with the peaks of another wave, as well as the troughs with troughs. When this alignment occurs, the resulting wave has a greater amplitude than any of the individual waves. This means that the combined wave is stronger or louder in the case of sound waves or brighter in the case of light waves. Constructive interference is often observed in situations such as musical instruments, where multiple sound waves combine to produce a fuller sound. Destructive interference, on the other hand, occurs when the peak of one wave aligns with the trough of another wave. In this case, the waves cancel each other out to some extent, resulting in a wave of lower amplitude. If the waves are perfectly out of phase, they can completely cancel each other, leading to silence in sound waves or darkness in light waves. An example of destructive interference can be seen in noise-canceling headphones, which use this principle to reduce unwanted background noise by producing sound waves that are out of phase with the ambient sounds. Interference can be observed in various contexts, including light and sound. In optics, the interference of light waves can create colorful patterns, as seen in soap bubbles or oil slicks on water. These colors arise from the constructive and destructive interference of light waves reflecting off the thin layers of liquid. In summary, interference is the process by which two or more waves interact to produce a new wave pattern. Constructive interference results in a wave with greater amplitude, while destructive interference leads to a wave with lower amplitude. This phenomenon is significant in understanding various applications in physics, engineering, and technology, as well as in everyday experiences such as sound and light. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negative. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The Doppler effect is a phenomenon that occurs when there is a change in frequency or wavelength of a wave in relation to an observer moving relative to the wave source. This effect is commonly experienced with sound waves, but it also applies to light waves. When a wave source moves toward an observer, the waves in front of the source become compressed. This compression leads to a higher frequency and shorter wavelength, which results in a higher pitch sound for sound waves. For instance, as an ambulance approaches, the siren sounds higher in pitch. As the ambulance passes by and moves away, the waves behind it are stretched out, leading to a lower frequency and longer wavelength. Consequently, the siren sounds lower in pitch as it moves away. Conversely, if the observer moves toward a stationary wave source, they encounter the waves more frequently, perceiving a higher frequency and a higher pitch. If the observer moves away from the source, they encounter the waves less frequently, perceiving a lower frequency and a lower pitch. The Doppler effect is not limited to sound. It also affects light waves. When an object emitting light moves toward an observer, the light waves are compressed, leading to a shift toward the blue end of the spectrum, known as blue shift. If the object moves away from the observer, the light waves are stretched, resulting in a shift toward the red end of the spectrum, known as redshift. This effect is significant in astronomy, where it helps scientists determine whether celestial objects are moving toward or away from Earth. In summary, the Doppler effect describes the change in frequency or wavelength of waves as a result of the relative motion between the source and the observer. It results in higher frequencies and pitches when the source approaches and lower frequencies and pitches when it moves away. This effect is observable in both sound and light waves. 
and it has important applications in various fields, including acoustics, astronomy, and radar technology. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The Doppler effect explains how the frequency and wavelength of waves change due to the relative motion between a source of the waves and an observer. This effect is noticeable in both sound and light waves. In the case of sound, when a sound source moves toward an observer, the sound waves in front of the source get compressed. This compression causes the frequency of the sound to increase, resulting in a higher pitch. For example, when a train approaches, the sound of the whistle is higher in pitch. As the train passes and moves away from the observer, the sound waves behind the train are stretched out. This stretching decreases the frequency, leading to a lower pitch. The same principle applies to any moving sound source, such as an ambulance or a car horn. When it comes to light, the Doppler effect operates similarly, but with some differences due to the nature of light waves. If a light source moves toward an observer, the light waves are compressed, resulting in a shift toward the blue end of the spectrum, known as blue shift. This means that the light appears bluer than it would if the source were stationary. Conversely, if the light source moves away from the observer, the waves are stretched, causing a shift toward the red end of the spectrum, known as redshift. This makes the light appear redder. The Doppler effect has important applications in various fields. In astronomy, it helps scientists determine the movement of stars and galaxies. For example, if a star is moving away from Earth, it will exhibit redshift, indicating that it is receding. This information is crucial for understanding the expansion of the universe. In summary, the Doppler effect describes the change in frequency and wavelength of waves due to the relative motion between a source and an observer. In sound, it results in higher pitches as the source approaches and lower pitches as it moves away. In light, it leads to blue shifts when the source approaches and red shifts when it moves away. This phenomenon has significant implications in acoustics and astronomy. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negative, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. The Doppler effect has several practical applications particularly in the areas of sound and astronomy. In everyday life, the sound of moving vehicles provides a clear example of the Doppler effect. When a vehicle, such as an ambulance or a police car, approaches with its siren on, the sound waves in front of it are compressed. This results in a higher pitch sound that we hear as the vehicle gets closer. As the vehicle passes and moves away, the sound waves behind it are stretched, causing the pitch to drop and creating a lower sound. This change in pitch alerts people to the presence of the emergency vehicle, making it an important safety feature in urban environments. In astronomy, the Doppler effect is crucial for understanding the movement of celestial bodies. When light from a star or galaxy reaches Earth, its wavelength can change based on the motion of that object relative to us. If a star is moving toward Earth, the light waves are compressed, resulting in a blue shift. This indicates that the star is moving closer. Conversely, if a star is moving away from Earth, the light waves are stretched, leading to a redshift. This redshift provides information about the speed at which the star or galaxy is receding. Astronomers use redshift to study the expansion of the universe. By measuring the redshift of distant galaxies, they can determine how fast they are moving away from us which is key to understanding the rate of expansion of the universe itself. In summary, the Doppler effect has practical applications in everyday life, such as the changing pitch of sirens from moving vehicles, and in astronomy, where it helps scientists measure the movement of stars and galaxies through redshift and blue shift. These applications highlight the significance of the Doppler effect in both familiar and scientific contexts. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you, kindly avoid spreading negativity 
If our content, please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Wave physics plays a significant role in various fields, impacting technology, communication, and our understanding of the natural world. Here are some key applications of wave physics. One of the most notable applications is in communication technologies. Radio waves, a type of electromagnetic wave, are used in broadcasting radio and television signals. These waves travel long distances and can carry information through modulation techniques. Similarly, microwaves are utilized in mobile phone communications and satellite transmissions, allowing for efficient data transfer over vast distances. Another application is in medical imaging. Ultrasound waves are widely used in healthcare for imaging and diagnostic purposes. When ultrasound waves are directed into the body, they bounce off internal structures, creating images that help doctors assess various conditions, monitor pregnancies, and guide procedures. This non-invasive technique relies on the principles of wave physics to produce detailed images. In addition to communication and medical imaging, wave physics is essential in the field of acoustics. Sound waves are studied to design concert halls and auditoriums for optimal sound quality. Understanding how sound waves interact with different materials and spaces allows architects and engineers to create environments that enhance auditory experiences. Furthermore, wave physics is crucial in the development of technologies such as sonar, which uses sound waves to detect objects underwater. Sonar is commonly used in navigation, fishing, and underwater exploration. Similarly, seismic waves, generated by earthquakes, are analyzed to understand the Earth's structure and predict seismic activity. In the realm of optics, wave physics is fundamental to the functioning of various optical devices. Lenses and mirrors manipulate light waves to focus or redirect light, enabling the creation of cameras, microscopes, and telescopes. These tools enhance our ability to observe and study the world around us. In summary, wave physics has a wide range of applications in communication technologies, medical imaging, acoustics, underwater exploration, and optics. Its principles are essential for understanding and utilizing waves in practical and innovative ways, significantly impacting various industries and fields of study. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before dis please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Wave physics is evident in numerous real-world examples across different fields. One prominent example is sound waves in music. When musical instruments produce sound, they generate vibrations that create sound waves in the air. These sound waves travel to our ears allowing us to perceive different pitches and tones. The principles of wave physics govern how instruments like guitars, pianos, and violins produce sound. For instance, the frequency of the vibrating strings determines the pitch of the note played. Understanding these wave properties enables musicians to create harmonious compositions and enhance the listening experience. Another example is seismic waves in geology. Seismic waves are generated by earthquakes and other geological activities. They travel through the earth and can be detected by seismometers. Geologists analyze these waves to study the earth's internal structure and assess the location and magnitude of seismic events. By understanding the behavior of seismic waves, scientists can gain insights into tectonic plate movements and predict potential earthquake risks. This knowledge is crucial for developing safety measures in earthquake-prone regions. Light waves and optics also exemplify the application of wave physics. Light behaves as both a wave and a particle, and its wave properties are harnessed in various optical devices. Lenses and mirrors utilize the principles of reflection and refraction to manipulate light waves, enabling the creation of cameras, microscopes, and telescopes. These devices enhance our ability to observe and explore the microscopic and astronomical worlds. For example, telescopes use mirrors to gather and focus light from distant stars, allowing astronomers to study the universe's structure and composition. 
In summary, real-world examples of wave physics include sound waves and music, which shape our auditory experiences, seismic waves and geology, which provide insights into the Earth's structure, and light waves and optics, which enable advanced observation tools. These examples illustrate the fundamental role of wave physics in various aspects of our daily lives and scientific understanding. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Modern technology has made significant advancements by harnessing the principles of wave physics, particularly through the use of ultrasound and various communication technologies. Ultrasound technology utilizes high-frequency sound waves that are above the audible range for humans. This technology is widely used in medical imaging, particularly in obstetrics, where it allows healthcare professionals to visualize the development of a fetus in the womb. During an ultrasound procedure, sound waves are transmitted into the body, and the echoes produced as these waves bounce off internal structures are captured to create images. This non-invasive technique provides valuable information without posing risks to the patient or the developing fetus, making it a crucial tool in modern medicine. In addition to healthcare, ultrasound is also employed in industrial applications for non-destructive testing. This involves using ultrasound to detect flaws or irregularities in materials without causing damage. By sending sound waves through a material, technicians can identify cracks, voids, or other defects that may compromise the integrity of structures such as bridges or pipelines. Communication technologies heavily rely on various types of waves to transmit information. Radio waves, a type of electromagnetic wave, are utilized for broadcasting radio and television signals. These waves can travel long distances, making them ideal for transmitting audio and visual content to wide audiences. Additionally, microwaves are employed in mobile phone communications and satellite transmissions. The ability of these waves to carry information efficiently enables seamless connectivity in our daily lives. Fiber optic technology represents another remarkable application of wave physics. Fiber optics use light waves to transmit data over long distances with minimal loss of signal quality. In this technology, light pulses travel through thin strands of glass or plastic, allowing for high-speed internet connections and improved communication networks. This method has revolutionized data transmission enabling faster and more reliable communication across the globe. In summary, modern technology leverages waves in various forms, such as ultrasound for medical imaging and industrial testing, as well as communication technologies utilizing radio waves, microwaves, and fiber optics. These applications illustrate how wave physics continues to play a vital role in advancing technology and improving our everyday lives. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or com please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Optics is the branch of physics that studies the behavior and properties of light. It encompasses a wide range of phenomena, including reflection, refraction, and diffraction, as well as the interaction of light with matter. Understanding optics is essential for various fields, such as photography, astronomy, and medicine. One of the fundamental concepts in optics is the nature of light itself. Light can be described as both a particle and a wave, a duality that is crucial to understanding how it interacts with different materials. This wave-particle duality leads to various optical phenomena, which can be categorized into two main areas, geometrical optics and physical optics. Geometrical optics focuses on the propagation of light in straight lines and how it interacts with surfaces. It explains concepts such as reflection, where light bounces off surfaces, and refraction, where light bends as it passes from one medium to another. These principles are essential for designing optical instruments like lenses and mirrors, which manipulate light to form images. On the other hand, physical optics delves into the wave nature of light. It explores phenomena such as interference and diffraction, 
which occur when light waves overlap and interact with obstacles. These concepts are crucial for understanding more complex behaviors of light and are fundamental to technologies like lasers and holography. Optics has numerous applications in everyday life. For example, glasses and contact lenses correct vision by refracting light to focus images on the retina. Cameras use lenses to capture images by focusing light onto a sensor or film. In addition, optical fibers transmit data as light, enabling high-speed communication. In summary, optics is a vital field of study that examines the behavior and properties of light. It encompasses both geometrical and physical optics, providing a foundation for various technologies and applications that enhance our understanding of the world and improve our daily lives. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you kindly avoid spreading negativity if our content doesn't resonate with you. Thank you for your support. Optics is a branch of physics that focuses on the study of light and its interactions with matter. It encompasses a variety of phenomena, including how light travels, how it is reflected and refracted, and how it behaves when it encounters different materials. Light is a form of electromagnetic radiation that is visible to the human eye, but it also includes other wavelengths that are not visible, such as ultraviolet and infrared light. The study of optics is essential for understanding how light behaves and is fundamental to many fields, including engineering, medicine, and communication. Optics can be divided into two main categories, geometrical optics and physical optics. Geometrical optics deals with the straight-line propagation of light and the principles of reflection and refraction. This area of optics is crucial for designing lenses, mirrors, and other optical devices that manipulate light to form images. Physical optics, on the other hand, examines the wave nature of light and how it interacts with obstacles. This includes phenomena such as interference, diffraction, and polarization. Understanding these wave properties is important for technologies like lasers and fiber optics, which have numerous applications in communication and information technology. Overall, Optics is a vital field that helps us understand the behavior of light and its applications in various technologies, enhancing our ability to see, communicate, and explore the world around us. Please share, subscribe, like, comment, press the bell icon. Before disliking or commenting negatively, I request you,